emotes. Maybe the time now. Um, okay. Well, let me put your thing up here. There you are. Okay. I got you. 15 seconds ago. What'd you do? Hit the wrong button? Wow. I mean, when you say now, you mean now, don't you? Holy shit. Okay. No, I made tag. Okay. Uh, what do you mean tag? Oh, I have. Okay. I, okay. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? Okay. Here we go. Very good. I don't have to have commercials. Ha ha. There you go. I can't hear you, by the way. No, I don't need that. Um. Uh. Hang on. We're gonna get my earbuds. And I can bring your screen to the back. Here. Resub! Oh, look at us streaming together. Modding for each other. That's freaking awesome. There. And that way you can't hear my shit. Brave, you hear yourself because other people also want to be able to hear you as well. Did you forget about that? <laughs> so for people on my stream to hear you, I have to have your audio on, on my side of the stream. So you, so they can hear you. So now you got to entertain as my starting soon screen. While I'm finishing like my Twitter notification, Instagram story, yada, yada, yada. So you're the entertainment. Instead of, mu oh, instead of music to today, okay. oh, I got instead you of now. music today, you are the entertainment. Okay. Well, now that we're communicating and I can hear. Wow, you're moving up in the world, aren't you, Luigi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving on up to the east side. Anyway, yeah. Except there's a delay and I can hear myself talk and I don't like it, so yeah. I think I've been kidnapped. Is this, is this, um... Yeah. There's not consent for this, Luigi. <laughs> 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 
That's a fact. I didn't have anything. You did also make me about uh, about five minutes late to my stream, so this is this is a good uh, a, a good uh, payback, I guess. And also enjoy your six six subs I just gave you as well too. Yeah, everyone, Brave just got affiliate. So if you don't go and use your Prime on her, after you use your Prime on me, like if you have a Prime, you want to use it on me first. But after that, you guys can go and sub to Braves. That way, when I make my tier three simp shirt, you guys can buy that and be real tier three simps. Thank you for the gift subs, Mr. Luigi. I appreciate you so much. And the delay is real because I'm hearing you talk in my ear, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. And just make sure you wash your hands if you use your sub on him and then come over and use your foot or your, your prime sub. Why wow, are you calling me dirty? What the hell? I'm not dirty. I have hand sanitizer in my office on my cart. I'm going to hell. You calling me dirty? Ow, the hell is that? It's... Or like, ew, target germs. I'm a Walmart person. No, is that what that is? Yeah, I see what it is. I'm saying it. He said... No, no, no. No. I'm saying, I'm saying that you said use your prime on me first and then go use your prime on her. So it just sounded dirty. I'm like, all I ask you is wash your hands before. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> so dirty. So dirty, daddy. I can't sing, by the way. Oh, wow, you've got my stream up and everything. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, cool. Well, that's cool. Here, let me dance for you. There you go. Alrighty guys, welcome into today's latest live stream here on the channel. My name is Luigi, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, just let you guys know, you guys will not be able to see myself, at least for a few minutes guys, because uh, we have Discord open and Somewhat Cloudy is ready for this fun little interview that we're going to kind of do about everything. So I don't have my camera on OBS, I'm sorry guys, but when we switch over to the... Uh, Discord, you guys will see my beautiful, lovely face. I promise you on that. So, with that, everybody, uh, we're going to go ahead and give him a call, and we're going to do an episode of the QCast, which is a 
basically a successor to what was called the Velm show that I did back in 2019 uh, with Elf and Houdini uh, with Passy as my like co-producer. And uh, this is kind of like going to be more of a, of a one-on-one kind of style. And hopefully we can kind of give a little bit of insight uh, from an artist's perspective on how it is that he created these emotes because for me I, I really want to know how these emotes were, were made and you know I gave him some reference pictures and seeing how his art style kind of connected and seeing what type of things that he used maybe he went to other people's streams maybe he looked up like a like a batch of emotes that other people have made and kind of done stuff like, I don't really know all this stuff so I thought it'd be fun if we kind of took a minute kind of get some chat and stuff up and then I will show you guys the seven new emotes that we have for our channel so i hope you guys are excited for that if we can get some hype in chat and also i don't know if somewhat cloudy is on the stream or not but somewhat cloudy also has a very very special badge uh so only one person in my channel has this badge and that is the artist badge which means that he is now my official artist uh, for any emote related stuff. And then obviously has retinue is also technically my artist as well too, uh, for doing the, uh, logo and stuff like that. There he is. There he is. But yeah, that little blue paintbrush little emote. So him and has retinue will both have that, uh, artist pin badge, but I think it's super freaking awesome. So, um, I am very happy to have, you know, two people who have been, who have been really great. Um, Somewhat Cloudy did the emotes, and then Hez Retinue kind of does a lot of the little things. So he did stuff for the Ness. He did the uh, logo for my channel, and then uh, graphics also made my profile picture. So some amazing people who have some amazing artist skills that I don't have anymore is doing all this so it is very nice to see everything in, in a nice way it's always great to see anything and everything so but with that my friends we are going to go ahead and uh get somewhat cloudy on the discord we'll go ahead and put all the faces up and stuff and we'll uh get that going my friends we'll get her going we'll get her going <laughs> I'm going to move that over there because that would look very weird if that was not on there. And then let's go to this side over here. I'll go ahead and do a video call. Then I should probably do a, a uh, yeah, let's leave that like that. That way I don't have to do any weird um, scene transitions because let's be honest, I'll be annoying. Hello? Hello? Ah, I forgot to hit the video. My bad. Lol. Uh, you should be able to hit the little video icon at the bottom. You should be able just to click in. It should turn on. Whoa! Hello. Fancy shit! No, I'm joking. <laughs> Fancy <laughs> new things. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at this. All shiny and new. Hasn't been on Twitch for too long. This is where we break him. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You didn't sign up for that portion when I told you about this. That's okay. It's Whatever. time for the newbie roast. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't know what Keck W is. Doesn't know the big poggers, you know. Big roast. Yeah. <laughs> At least I knew what Pog meant. That's very I had true. To ask what Keck W was. You did. For anyone who doesn't know, Keck W is the um, the old man from this like one Russian um, talk show. <laughs> that's that's Keck W. It's the best emo. I don't care what anyone says. Here you guys go for chat. So you guys already, you guys have the reference. There's your Keck W. It's beautiful. A man with a yeah. singular tooth laughing. It's Twitch culture. Yeah. It's culture. 
But hi, wel welcome into. So have have you so have you done any other like cl like collaborative things like this with any other streamers yet, or am I like your introduction to, to how this normally happens? You're the first person I've done any like directly on the stream stuff for okay. like emotes and stuff. But I have done a VTuber model for someone else. Ooh, VTuber. Yep. I know yep. a lot of those in the industry. <laughs> yeah. They're all great friends, though. They're all great friends. Can't can't hate them. You gotta love them. Exactly. So before we get in, into an, any like artists talking and, and stuff, um, kind of I just want to learn a little bit more about you. So, um, Liz, who is a mutual friend of ours, you guys know Liz as Titty Bits. Uh, here on the stream, and so I've known Liz for about two years now. I think early 2019 is when I, I met her. I met her through a person who I was streaming with and dating with for a while, but that's a whole other story. That's a story for a not-right-now time, um, <laughs> but... Uh, our friendship has like lasted pretty well, which is really cool. And and Skylar's chill is nice, so that's really nice to have that everyone doesn't hate me, which is a good sign. Um, but yeah, so uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us maybe just like anything you really want to say. You're you're you have free work, free reign to say whatever you want. Okay, well, fair enough. As, as long, long as it's TOS, I... no TOS. <laughs> if you if you TOS me, <laughs> you TOS me, I am going to charge back that money quickly. <laughs> All right, there's there is I one rule: up no TOS. <laughs> Got it. All right. All right. Um. So, hello everyone. My name is somewhat cloudy. Um. I'm an artist. I'm a streamer. I'm a goofball and a caffeine addict. Uh. I have been. I am. Uh. I'm trying to think of the best way I can explain it. Um, I'm an artist first post. I went to school for art. That's what I studied. That was originally what I was going to be streaming. I was going to be like Twitch Bob Ross. That was my original idea. Don't have the space for that quite yet, but we're working on it. Um, to give you an idea of who I am as a person, I play a lot of games, even outside of stream. I have too many hobbies to list. I play d and I do all this crazy stuff. That's basically me in a nutshell. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so did so I'm guessing you went to college for like art, like graphic design and stuff. Uh, not graphic design. I have a bachelor's in the fine arts. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, in the bougie arts. Oh shit! That's yeah. fancy. <laughs> yeah, I expected to graduate with a monocle. Instead, they're like, go to New York and be a starving artist. Yeah. Go to New York or uh, become a high school teacher and somehow, some way, get your, uh, what's it called? The, yeah. uh, is, is it the maestro? That's like the arts doctorate, if I'm correct. Isn't it called maestro? Um, n n the for, I believe for music, it's maestro, but uh, for fine art, it's a master's. Oh, okay. Yep. Huh. I thought there was a, I thought there was a special one for arts. I didn't know. But... Yeah. If anyways. there is, I have no idea. <laughs> if there is, I don't really know. The only thing I know is that my uh, art teacher from um, from my high school, she wrote a best selling book on Amazon, and uh, she graduated with a whatever a doctorate would be in painting. So like she's like a very good painter, very good artist. I just, and also just an amazing person to talk to because a little uh. Not to deviate from this conversation, but a little fun fact about her is that her name is Casper, Casper Bossler. In other words, her I believe her grandfather worked on Casper in the Friendly Ghost. Oh. I think it was her grandfather or great-grandfather. One of the two, but I think it was her like grandpa who like worked on it. And it was like super cool to see those type of stuff. So Wait, I I'm like I like the movie, like yeah. The old UPA. Oh, the movie, not the UPA cartoon. Got yeah, not it. not the UPA cartoon. The the uh, I think the uh, like however they originally did Casper is how they did it. But like a lot of the the way that stuff was like you know sweet. So she loves to tell that story every single time she has new students. Like every single time she has new students, she always tells a story about it, which is so cute. 
I mean, um, it's the biggest flex to have your art teacher be like somewhat related to cartoons. Yeah, it is a huge flex. And I'm over here like, I'm just a starving artist on Twitch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm on Twitch.tuvalu. Oh, yeah, it's Tuvalu. Uh, technically, Tuvalu was bought out by the um, dot .tv extension, um, but originally it was um, Justin.tuvalu, then it became Twitch.tuvalu, and then Twitch.tv. Calling it Twitch.tuvalu makes me sound... It makes it sound like it's like a website from the 90s, though. Oh, it, that oh sounds absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. I can Maybe. just imagine, like, the Nickelodeon splash screen. Yeah. <laughs> Twitch.tuvalu. Oh, no. <laughs> a brand new series that you guys can create and vote on will tell us what cartoons we make. <laughs> what kind of crimes will Rocco get into this day? I swear. Also, hi, Pool. Don't don't think I'm not saying hi to people in chat. Bray's been in here because I bullied her. And then Pool Bump's in here. Speaking of bullied, I need everyone to do me a huge favor right this second. Brave, I need a shout out for Somewhat Cloudy. He is like a point one viewer away from affiliate. Brave, you just got affiliate. I want this man affiliate by the end of September. So if you guys don't give him fucking affiliate to where I can drop subs in September, I'm going to fight each and every single person in my chat or on YouTube who watches this. So go follow, and when he has it, use your prime sub on me first and then him. <laughs> I need the money to repay for the emotes. Other than that, <laughs> go do it. Heck yeah. So there we go. There, There's a, a nice, fun shout out. You probably didn't know I was going to give you. So there you go. Enjoy that. Lovely. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, if I can type, Jesus. I'm going to put my phone real quick on silent so it doesn't start blowing up from the shout out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All three people watching in my chat right now, we're gonna blow yeah! up the phone. <laughs> Blowing. <Yeah. laughs> no, but I appreciate those. So, three. Uh, so I guess the the real question is what? So, since you can't do a a art style stream right now, um, due to obviously you just did a move and stuff like that. So, what do you do right now as as streaming? Like, what type of like stuff Ooh. do you like doing? Well. This is a very, for me, this is a hard question because I'm indecisive as hell. But right now what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of variety streaming. I play a lot of games, just different ones. I particularly like story games because I get too competitive with things like shooters, you know? But I, I'll play really any games people want me to play. I'm down for that kind of stuff. I love reacting to stuff. Um, I have a segment called Wheel of Gaming where I just spin a wheel of all these games that I haven't played before or games that might be cringe to play on stream just for the fun of it. Um, I do occasionally do pixel art streams. I haven't done these in a while, but I'm bringing them back where I what I'll do is I'll take like ripped sprites from old Nintendo games or like Genesis games and I'll match the color palettes and stuff and basically corrupt the sprites in fun ways suggested by viewers. Um, I have a Newgrounds page so you can see the old ones of that. Newgrounds? Um, it might be a little different. Yeah. I am a hey. Newgrounds, an old Newgrounder. Ooh, for anyone who's, who does not know, Newgrounds was one of my stomping points in my internet livelihood that I have had. Newgrounds was the first place I I, I saw any of these Mario parodies, YouTube poops, you know, all those were on Newgrounds. And on top of that, too, you have people who actually made, like, Flipnote stories before, you know, while Flipnote was still around for a long time and all that stuff. And yep. Newgrounds is still here. It's not it, – it, it's 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 kicking in a way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kicking. It's, it's not what it used to be, I'll tell you that. <laughs> No, it's not what it was, but I guess I guess in general though, all companies aren't really aren't really what they were. I mean, Twitch. Like if we think about it, like five years ago, Twitch was way smaller than what it was yep. now, and the explosion of the you know Fortnite Battle Royale, H one Z one Warzone, and all those big streamers playing with big celebrities kind of influenced this more. But on top of that too, like same thing with YouTube. If you ask someone. 
who created something on YouTube from anywhere between 2006 to 2012. Uh, <laughs> they're going to have a whole different feeling about YouTube today versus people who like just started like yesterday or two days ago. The... I was just... Oh. Oh, go for, go for it. Sorry. Uh, I was just writing a script for a YouTube video specifically about this. I was talking about this whole thing because old YouTube, for those that don't know or didn't grow up with YouTube, you had to, I, if I remember correctly, you had to add a debit or credit card to confirm your age on the account. And nowadays, you can make an account all you want. You can, and due to that, we've had the adpocalypse stuff on YouTube. And I was wondering, why don't we go back to the credit card thing? Because then we don't have to worry about videos getting demonetized for being targeted at kids they have no excuse yeah. i was thinking about that Nah, they they would rather deal with the what's it called the kappa act or something like that they would rather deal right. with that and give the power to the creator which they give none anyway so they're just giving you another fucking pickle on your chick-fil-a sandwich pretty much <laughs> oh you know but like from so i started creating content in 2011 uh oh, on wow. youtube so I just made, made this note to everyone. I have done content creation for over 10 years. While very unsuccessfully, I have done content for 10 years, and I finally found a format, this type of format, slash the Nintendo games I play. That's the format that's worked well, at least for me and in, in my community. And I can still remember the days I had a like a 30-inch CRT TV in my other room, which was my living room, taking my netbook, again, a netbook running Windows 7 Starter Edition, so I couldn't even change the background of my PC, turning it over with the webcam, recording the screen while I attempt to commentate playing uh, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Like, that was some of my first original content, and my first ever video that blew up is when Steve Harvey took over Family Feud, I did a pair. I did was I did a two man parody with myself and my good buddy Cleek Geek, which was his original name back in the day was um, I don't even know anymore. He had like ten different names. <laughs> he he's finally sticking to Cleek Geek in his own way. But um, but me and him did a pretty much a two man show of hosting a whole family feud. I just found random questions from online. Uh, and I found a board online that I could use, and so I played as like the host and five of the contestants, and then he played as the other five contestants, and we would just play off of each other, completely improv And Free Mantle was like, "Yeah, you can't make anything from this. Uh, it's it's it, yeah." And now you play the Family Feud theme song on anything, and they're like, "Oh, that's okay. It's whatever." So thanks, Free Mantle. <laughs> Please don't sue me. Um, Aw, that sounds awesome though. But yeah, you just made me feel so much younger. <laughs> Which, thank you, I guess. I'll give you a I hint. Remember... You're actually older than me. I'll give you a hint. What? <laughs> You're 24, right? I Yes, I am 24. I'm I 23. Was... Yeah. <laughs> so to say that little old wow. me was trying to do YouTube, I had like five different group channels I used to like do stuff on, and all of them are <laughs> dead. Like... I. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I probably look 30 because of how much I just gave up during COVID, but shit. Yeah, no, I, I'm 23, so. Oh, wow. I, I, you, you had me fooled, but cool, man. Um, just like all say, the ladies at the self-checkouts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, um, you made me feel young there for a second because I remember when I tried to do my first Let's Plays, and I remember this was a long time ago. This was 2000... It had to be 2010 or 2011. It was a pirated copy of, like, unregistered Hypercam or something, and it, and it emulated, like, Super Mario World. And I I remember specifically, like, I would watched other YouTubers, like, um, if I remember correctly, one of the YouTubers I used to watch was, like, Madam Luna playing Dynamite Heady on the Genesis, stuff like that. And... I was like, I want to do that. I didn't know who PewDiePie was at this time. I didn't know that. I just thought, I want to play games on a camera. <laughs> and I realize now, like, it got bad enough to where I had um those, what do you call it? Those old, like, the old T-Mobile touchscreen phones. 
like the old like prototype ones, I would try to record <laughs> video games on the TV. Like I'd get a stand, I'd put it in front of the TV and be like, I'm going to do this cool thing in Halo and record it. And I made a YouTube channel. I uploaded a bunch of old clips of, and this is like 11 year old me playing Halo 3, just beating like throughout legendary Halo 3 with a skull. So, and it's so poorly recorded, it looks like it's faked. <laughs> Also, I don't know if you have my stream pulled up, but I hope you enjoyed the present I just gave you on my stream. Um, anyways. Huh? Uh, <laughs> if you go to my stream, you'll see what I did. <laughs> you can't tell me I don't know old YouTube without ex perfectly doing what I fucking did. <laughs> Oh, when perfect. when you when you know that I know that it was always a top left corner of whatever you were recording, it was always there. You can never get rid of it, but no one cared. No one gave a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Just and the old like, someone with a screen. someone with with a notepad. Like, hello, today I'm gonna teach you how to how to video edit a movie maker. <laughs> yeah, and, and if it wasn't the notepad, it was the awful like built-in mic in the windows pc or like that old one that came with the really old circular gray webcam and it would make your audio sound a little like oh this oh my god <laughs> bro oh uh, hy uh, hypercam was so yeah uh so one of the things i also used to do as well too so this probably sounds weird because no one's gonna know who these people are um, but my original like YouTube crew that I used to watch um, was Azure Blade Forty Nine, Proton John, Icran Girl, and I H Strudel, because all of them were playing Super Mario World ROM hacks. Yep, and I remember so Proton John. I you know I I I eventually was like yeah, I'm gonna try this out, and so you know I made my. Super Mario World Central account like in 2012 or something like that and learn how to patch the game, download everything and you know, I I had some old uh old websites back in the day that you know made like just not even hardly any money, but I would do episodes of uh Kaizo Mario and just try to beat that game and then move on to Super Mario World Central production games and stuff like that. Like, you know, all of that. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I would kill to play Kaizo Mario right now. I'm saving up right now for the little streamer card to connect to the Switch so I can play like Mario Maker and stuff for that. I'm super excited for that. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Don't play Mario Maker. It's, it's no, don't do that. Oh? Just, <laughs> okay. just, just, just buy, just get a few hacks and just go from there. Just, just got it. You know, it. Just become part of the Kaizo community. Just buy, just do Kaizo hacks. I'll tell you. Mario Maker is a very interesting beast in its own because anything that you know about Mario, like whenever I play Mario Maker, I have to switch my brain into Maker mode because whenever I'm playing any type of ROM hacks, you know, you can pretty much because in normal Mario World for the SNES or even the Game Boy, you can spin jump on almost anything and it would allow you to bounce off it. But in Mario Maker, they don't let you do that. They can they you yep. can only spin jump on certain things. Like, you know, for example, in Mario World, there is a skip that you can do if you're good at it, which is in World 5 Castle. If you spin jump correctly on the Potobos, you can actually skip through the first person the first part of World 5. Or if you oh. run from uh in Castle 7, if you run from left to the right, and if you um you know, if you fly your cape correctly and either go underneath or on top of the ball and chain characters, you can also skip that part of level two. And it's all time saves. Like, all that type of shit. Like, yo. Yeah. I Let's just say I sped run Mario World for about a month uh, because I did, it with, I did it with my friend group called The Nest. And I'm like, I want to do a challenge because all my friends, like, all play Mario <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to do a challenge. I think I'm going to win. And then we also did a Super Mario Bros. 3 one. We're actually going to redo it because we don't have the footage for it anymore. But I <laughs> lost by one level. My friend beat Bowser while I just got, I think while either I just got into the castle or I was like finishing the, the level behind me. Like it was like a five minute time difference. And so oh, it's like, no. I want my revenge. <laughs> So nice. I mean, um, you got the patience to speed run, dude. AI, I tried. Oh, 
A I don't know what your name is. I'm sorry, friend. AI? I guess I'm gonna call you AI. That's what I see the most. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Huh. Uh you just reminded me of this. I remember uh one of the things I wanted to try and do for streaming was speedrun games. What I didn't know was I picked one of the hardest games to start speedrunning when I gave it a shot. So about half a year ago, I had to take a break from streaming, and I've only recently come back. But that break was because I tried to speedrun Portal 2, which is one of my all-time favorite games. And I already was doing bad. I was like, okay, we're going to learn this. We're going to do this stream of just going through it, trying to figure it out. And I got soft-locked halfway through the, the game. There's this part right when you open the large door into like the 80s part of aperture and you go through the door and it's just a small little hallway with two loading screens for some reason i open that door and the game spawned me halfway in the wall of that small little subsection no so you got actually bad luck, <laughs> bro. i, I no. couldn't get out so I, I just sat there and i had to sit there and i was like I just spent five hours trying to figure out all the time stamping, how to use the, I forget the name of the program to do time stamps on speed runs. And I was just, I was devastated. I was just like, we're not doing this again. <laughs> eh. But yeah. This person was, in my I, chat wants me to read their username backwards. I can't even read it forwards. Let me do this. Uh, R S O P. H I A. Rosfia? Rofia? Rosfia? R Sophia? Maybe. R Sophia? Is that what it is? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll just call you uh, backwards AI. Maybe we'll, we'll call you that. Backwards AI person. That works, I guess. If Tony Stark can name something Jarvis, I think backwards AI person kind of works as well. So, yeah. um. Just wanted to know as well too. Um, uh, so, what type of like uh, franchises are are you into with like video games? Like, what's some of your favorite like all time franchises? Like, if a new game comes out, it's so oh, Sophie. <laughs> Sorry, I've um, I'm I'm part <laughs> I'm part of another community on YouTube called Cop Cards. They uh, do live Pokemon card unbreak breaks and stuff like that Yo. Sophia you got me while I'm doing an interview <laughs> make me look <laughs> stupid what the hell sorry that was very mean hi Sophia welcome to the channel <laughs> oh, I love you all right anyways um yep. yeah what are some what are some like video game franchises that you have um you know that that you just like love like you would be like if a new one drops tomorrow I'm dr I am dropping the wallet on the table. Um I have so I have many game series for this but I'm going to name 4. Okay. So 3 of these are what I basically bankrupt myself doing when this first came out. I bought a PS4 as an impulse buy because the new Ratchet and Clank game came out on it. And then I heard that the Spyro Reignited trilogy came out about it. And then I heard that the Crash Bandicoot trilogy was coming out on it. And so I impulse bought a PS4 and those three games when they came out. And I was only disappointed with the Ratchet and Clank one. But those are like, those kind of like PS2, PS1 platformers, like Spyro, the, is my like number one, number two favorite character. And then on top of that, on top of those three, it's any 2D Sonic game. Like if an, like if Sonic Mania 2 dropped, right then I would there. be losing my mind. So, okay. So you're also a platform junkie, junkie too. I don't, I don't get a lot of these on my streams because a lot of people who are on my streams are mostly FPS streamers, which is totally fine. So with you being a, a platform junkie as well, so I grew up originally on a GameCube. So technically, my oh, 2D wow. Mario start was actually on the DS with New Super Mario Bros. DS. But also what, how I learned about all the old games was through the Game Boy stuff. 
you you know Mario World, Mario Brothers Three, Yoshi's Island, uh, Mario Brothers Two, like all that from the advanced remakes. And so uh, me and my friend actually did a, did a, a tier list of Sonic games, and that was a interesting night. I'll say that for oh, sure. Oh no. Um, <laughs> so let me. So I guess I'm gonna ask you this. Um, and just your honest opinions have Have you watched the newest Sonic Forces uh, gameplay trailer at all? Sonic Forces gameplay trailer? Frontiers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. There you go. Yep. That's my answer. Um, uh, yes, I am actually. I'm very excited for it. Um, 3D games have... They're bad. Had... All right, good. Just, just, yeah. They're bad. <laughs> if, it's they're not, bad. if it's not Adventure 1, 2, Heroes, or... Heroes is good. That's the You know one, what? That's I, I, I even, I even gra- that's I, hill. I give credit to this game just because it's a game. I give credit to it. That game has memories seared so, into my mind, that one. Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? I don't know, Shadow. Why are you cussing in a Sonic game? <laughs> Why is I'm a girl kissing Sonic? <laughs> because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the evil ending. <laughs> so, I, so I guess I should probably tell you this. I don't know if you're a part of this, but uh, there's a big group of Crush 40 fans. So if you like the Sonic games, I feel like you love Crush 40. Discord.gg for slash crush40. I'm a part of that uh, whole thing. It is a fan server. Johnny Gioli, who is the singer of Crush 40, is in there as well. He makes some appearances here and there on things, and they just got done doing a Discord server live and learn um, cover, and it was super cool. And a few of us in there... Uh, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say on this yet, but a few of us in there are actually trying to make a podcast about Sonic-related stuff because all of us are like, we all have different opinions because a lot of us are at different ages. So, yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff. So if you guys love Crush 40 or anything Sonic-related, um, discord.gg forward slash crush40. Go join it. Tell them that I sent you, and maybe I'll get a cookie or something. I don't know. Oh, so, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Um. Anyways, so, so, so Sonic is obviously something that I kind of learned a lot later, but funny enough, the first technical platformer I ever played, Crash Three. The first one I ever oh. played was Crash Bandicoot Three Warped. Oh and, no! And I remember that because my mom went to I think go get food or something, and so I was at home, right? And so in the game, if you die, you know that Uka Uka comes up with all the red background and it just screams "Game over." I shit myself as a kid, <laughs> um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna turn off the the game and I'm gonna go watch Power Rangers or something. Shit. Like I was scared. <laughs> I I thought I broke something. Like I I thought I screwed up royally about it. So I yeah, fully understand that. Um, one hundred percent get that. I used to um trying to think of a. Okay, I got this. I have a fear that might top this, and it's the most embarrassing thing for me. Uh, I've had to explain this to my girlfriend. I've explained this to people. Uh. Plants that move in video games scare the shit out of me. <laughs> and in Spyro 2, there's a whole level where the trees, when you get near them, grow eyes and attack you. Like, they throw bees at you, and you don't know they're the enemies until you walk towards them. And so Spyro 2 was the last Spyro game I ever 100% completed out of, like, all of them. This is from, like, it was, like, Spyro 1, Spyro 3, Heroes... Uh, Spyro Hero's Tale, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Spyro 2 was the last one because I wouldn't, I would not play that level. I would get everything else 100%. And then this level in the middle of the game, I wouldn't touch. And I'd be like, I'm done. We're good. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Video games giving kids fear. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that happens. 
But we grew out of those fears and we beat the games properly. As we're true, hardcore, caffeine only gamers. Sleep, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Social life, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> um, uh, Ooh, rainbow. GS. GSA Granny, thank you very much for the follow as Luigi stares intensifiers. Um, welcome, in, welcome in. We're doing a little uh, kind of an interview uh, with my uh, emote artist, kind of just talking about some stuff. So, welcome in. Hope you're having a good rest of your uh, Sunday evening. I don't remember what day it was. I don't know what day it is anymore. Let's be honest here. So, all right. So. With that, so you didn't mention Mario. Are you a Mario person? Are you like a big Mario guy? Or, or are you kind of like, you know, Crash and Sonic kind of have a little advantage on it? I will say I do really enjoy Mario games, but I didn't grow up with them like most people. I had a Sega Genesis, but I never had a Nintendo console until the Switch. So when it comes to Mario, I love the games. I've The ones I've played, like I've played the Galaxies. I've played Odyssey. Those are fun. I enjoy them. Um, I used to, I'm always down to play them. They always look fun. So, yeah. They're, they're, they're a good time. Uh, when the Nintendo Switch Online dropped, uh, me and my good buddy Houdini Fontmeister, um, while still trying to learn the whole Nintendo Switch Online thing, doesn't actually have proper servers. It's, you know, if this person's internet is shit and your internet is okay, it's still a shitty experience for everybody. Um, oh Nintendo, boy. please get dedicated servers. It's not hard. I promise you. If SNES 9X can do it for free, and if PlayStation can do it, and it's not that hard, and you're already charging an arm and a leg, to just, 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 just jump in and do it. I know you guys are from Japan. I get it, but just like, just plug in the Ethernet wire and let it run. We don't need Wi-Fi. <laughs> Anyways, agreed. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have small rants about that legitimately all the time. Um, but so. Um, with your experience with the 3D Mario games, uh, what is what is your favorite one out of all the 3Ds that you have played? And while you answer that, I'm gonna think. Uh, I can't read these names. Why are you guys doing it to me? Uh, it says Maximus at the end. Comedius Maximus. Thank you very much for the follow as well as Luigi Stairs intensifies. Uh, yeah. So favorite Mario 3D game. So this is going to be a very indis this is going to be a very divisive pick. Um the very first 3D Mario game I played was Super Mario 64 on the DS. Okay. And from what I understand, a lot of people don't like that remake, but that's my favorite one because I played that before the original one. So me being able to play as Yoshi was what brought me joy in that game. It it was a very different experience, and I understand why people don't like it as a remake. You know, you have to have certain characters do certain things. You can't do them only as Mario. I totally understand that. But also, too, I think that's what also makes the game different and new. Because if you, if you think about it, the DS was coming to the newest generation of gamers, you know? The DS wasn't going to the person who had an N64, because they have... The GameCube and the Wii came out, I think, what, like a year later or something like that? Because the DS came out in, like, 05, uh, I think. Something like that. The Wii is 2006, 2007. Yeah, I remember that for sure. I think the DS was, like, one year above or something like that. But, yep. yeah, this this little dinosaur piece of technology is still a, an amazing thing of mine that I will love and cherish forever. And legitimately, the game that I first ever 100% completed was this game. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, you know, learning about all the secrets and star coins and how to spend them and stuff, like, I was hooked on hours for all that stuff, right? Um, You know, so yeah. Mario has a very special place in my heart, too, but also, you know, you also can't deny that Sonic and and Crash are are a thing. You know, uh, C Crash Four. Depending on which yep. one you want, depending on which one you want to count as Crash Four, real Crash True. Four or Japan's Crash Four, which is also known as the Wrath of, Wrath of Cortex, because in uh, Japan they actually named it Crash Four. 
I did not know that. Oopsie. Um, I, I didn't know there was... Ra- I, I think I missed Wrath of Cortex. That was the one on the PS2, right? Uh, yeah, PS2, GameCube. Uh, I think it was on Xbox 360 as well. Yep. See, that's the one I missed because uh, I, I think I went from 3 straight to Twin Sanity. That, that's a very good thing. <laughs> Wrath oh, of really? Cortex is a... Um, in the nicest way possible, it's a good game when it's platforming. That's all I can really say about that. I see. And knowing that I also did a December streamathon back in 2018 where I played the game every single day until I actually like 100% completed it. Didn't help the cause either. But I will say the GameCube port is, is kind of nice, but the problem is that the GameCube has a weird way of handling some polygons. So, like, oh. Uka Uka might be talking over here, and you can see the octagon that's doing the shade lighting for it. And it's just like, ooh, that's pretty. Oh. <laughs> so, Wasn't that I, a similar issue with the Crash Remasters? Because, like, people were finding it a lot harder with a round hitbox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus the square hitbox, the round hitbox is a lot. It's more finicky. That's also why I kind of like playing the originals more than the remakes, just because the originals, you kind of, if you miss a jump, it is your fault. But in the remakes, the sliding sometimes doesn't want to trigger the same way it wants to and stuff. You know, and obviously the new Crash 4 has, you know, obviously like Crash is his own being now, where all the enemies yep. are their own beings, which is very nice. But, you know, also, too, having the little uh, yellow dot at the bottom where you see when Crash jumps and stuff is a very nice additive. So, yeah, Crash 4 is a lot of fun. It is it is definitely the hardest of, like, if you want to call it the original trilogy, Crash 4 will legitimately be the hardest one uh, because of, oh boy. It, it gives you an ass-kicking towards the end. Um, so, so if I were to ask you... I'm asking the questions now okay. in this interview. No. Okay. <laughs> um, if you had to choose between, like, the like if you had to, like, delete one, like the original games or the remasters, which one are you choosing? <sighs> knowing that I have the, my answer. Oh. Knowing the remasters were the only reason why I bought a PS4 Pro in the first place, the remakes. I would much prefer to emulate the original games while they don't look as good and they are much more pixelated. That gives it the charm that Crash had. Crash's body was made specifically because of those polygons. Same thing with Laura Croft and her pixel breasts. You know, they were made in a certain way to look good on a TV. Same with Spyro. Spiral, I will say they did better with the Spiral remake than I thought they were going to do. I truthfully I had, I, I thought it was not going to be as good as it was. And having the same control feeling for all the games in Spiral was a much needed additive that I feel like we needed to have. But the problem is that in Crash Bandicoot, you can't translate Crash 3's controls on Crash 1. Because Crash 1 is all about precision platforming, precision jumps, and waiting, right? Where Crash 2, you had the jetpack. Then you had Crash 3, and it was great, you know? It was a, yeah. it was a good video <laughs> game. Yeah. Um, so, my answer for this one was that was the same. I would go with the originals. But for a reason that you didn't mention, uh, even though the remasters do a really good job of recreating like the art and the music for both Spyro and crash. I think the art, well, to be, to add another factor, the art, the voice acting and the music, I think are better in the original. Yeah. The art, the, the art styles and the music, I don't always try to include just because when you remake something, you have to remaster them. And I feel like that's True. just a way you have to do it now. Like, if Nintendo would bring out Mario World again and, like, actually, like, remake it where it's in 16 by 9 and stuff, I feel like they would have uh, a, 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 the instrumental be a little more, like, precise, I guess. Um, you know, but even even with that, though, the way that the sound chip was in 
I'm gonna say it in both. The sound chips in the Genesis and the the first PlayStation had a very much of a rock and roll feel, rock and roll sound, much more metally. Where with Nintendo, it was more orchestral, which I love both. Like Peach's Castle and N64, one of the most beautiful tracks that you can listen to on an N64, and also GoldenEye too. The entire soundtrack of GoldenEye on N64 is fantastic, but. Ooh. Even in like, even if you if you tell me like, you know, let's remake Mortal Kombat and let's put it on the Sega Genesis when it was originally a Nintendo title, they don't match well because the it's a completely different sound. If you put Mortal Kombat on a on a on a like a Super Nintendo and that's how you first played it, then you go to your friend's house right and they have a Sega Genesis and you play Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis, you have Wait. two completely different sounds. Mortal Kombat is on the Super Nintendo. I didn't know that. I grew up with the Genesis. Oh. Hold on. Uh, Mortal Kombat 3, 1, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, and Mortal Kombat 2 were on the SNES. Oh, wow. Yeah, they have a the whole... family console. <laughs> the family console. But if I am, But if I am correct, though... They did get rid of the blood, though, if I if I am understood correctly. Um, but there is a code that you could use. I, this might be for the Genesis only, but there was a code that someone could use in, in like, a Game Genie or whatever where you could get the blood back because it was already done. It got patched before it got released. Right. But, um, yeah, it was uh, released in 1992 for the arcades. You just says Mortal Kombat received ports of several platforms and even spawned the franchise. Uh, and it was ported to Super Nintendo in 1993 uh, by Sculptor Software and Acclaim. That's kind of shocking. Nintendo saw the stuff with Mortal Kombat, seeing that they're one of the games solely responsible for creating the ESRB, and then Nintendo's like, we still want them on our console. <laughs> but even then, though, the ESRB wasn't as heavily enforced, though. Uh, if, you, if we really go into video game history, the real ESRB ratings had to be made after the first build of San Andreas. Really? I thought it was... Oh. so I mean, the... that makes sense. So if, so for people who don't know this, there were a lot of PS2 games that got banned. Outright banned because of just so much bullshit. Right? Manhunt. Manhunt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the first one that comes yeah. to mind. That or um, uh, Carmageddon is the Carmageddon. other one, if I remember but the reason why the ESRB became so heavily involved was because in GTA San Andreas, there was a mini game after you dated your lady friend, where you go back to your um, go back to their house and you um, make sure that they're pleasured, and you had to time stuff correctly. And obviously, the louder the the better the correction, the louder it was. It is deemed hot coffee. That is the code word we use for it. But yep. because of that, there were so many complaints, so many complaints that it got yoinked off of store shelves everywhere. And for people who had it, I think they were able to mail it in or whatever, or they just had to just, just to throw it away or whatever. And they had to completely patch it out. And I think that was when the ESRB was like, we now need to pass through every single game that comes through. Because GTA... GTA pushed esrb every single time it came out i mean vice yep. city amazing and it pushed boundaries uh same thing with three i mean three was the real first one where it really actually dove you in into the 3d era of gaming but it was san andreas that they, they were like yeah that's a that's a we need to wash your hands give you a little slap on the wrist there that's oh my god that's absolutely mental Especially when you think of GTA Five now. Oh yeah. Like, okay, when I first played GTA Five, I played the story mode. You get a full ass torture mini game mm -hmm. in like the first thirty minutes of the game, and that was the most. I was like, listen, I know it's GTA, but this is here. 
And then not to mention, there's also stripper mini games in GTA Five, so that's even funnier. <laughs> yeah, but also too, I will say though, the dynamic of gaming has also very much changed. The San Andreas sure. came out in like '06, I think, and so it's either '06 or '04. I don't remember. I know it's an O something, but let's find out. I think it's '04 or '06. I could be wrong though. Watch it. Watch it be. Watch it be like '07. That would piss me it's off. It's '04. I was close. I said 06 first, but I was close. I was 04, 06. And if you think about it, games from back in that type of day, people looked at video gaming a lot differently than they are today. Like if even if, even yes. if you look at today's media, it is way more heavily like sweared and more sexual themes. I mean, I hate to go back to it, but look at Steve Harvey's Family Feud. If you watch an episode of Family Feud, from the 06 to 2010 era with John O'Hurley, the Dancing with the Star guy who also does the Puppy Bowl or whatever, the questions, you know, they can be a little naughty, but it's probably because of the contestants' answers. But when Steve Harvey came forward, and after a few years of being on air and not worrying about being canceled and getting super high ratings, they started asking dirtier and dirtier and dirtier questions. And I feel like that's just a whole new thing now that dirty is funny in today's media. But for a lot of us, dirty was funny f with YouTube. You know, people swearing at video games and stuff. That's what a lot of us grew up on. And now we're seeing, you know, little old grandpappy who goes to church on Family Feud. I think white balls is the answer, Steve. Let's see <laughs> white balls, you know. And it's like, it's like you look at that and it's like, Grandpa... <laughs> What are you doing? You're going crazy here. So make it grandma. Make it huh? grandma. Make it what? <laughs> that or even the answer about like, you know, what will a man do to get like to get sex or whatever and then just just him just walking up to the board. Kill <laughs> Like, yeah, good answer. <laughs> I'm immediately reminded of the um that one answer that became a TikTok joke, like the we asked a hundred men name something you want your girlfriend to do on your face. And the first thing that someone said was sit on it and Harvey just going crazy. Like that's the obvious answer. Now that whole interaction sounds like a joke. I'm going to bring it back to Newgrounds on Newgrounds. Yeah. Like in our time. So that's, that's hilarious. So, so if if someone did a parody of Family Feud, like back in like oh six oh seven, when it was still like kind of clean and stuff, and they just had weird ass questions like that, it would have been such a hit back in the day. But now it's a hit now because of the newer generation and everyone's growing up on TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. You know, I mean, shit. A lot of the most influential people on you know TikTok and YouTube and stuff are you know, very beautiful women who are not afraid to show their very beautiful bodies. And there's no problem with that. If you have, if, if you are someone who wants to, you know, express self-love, I have no problem with that. Self-love is great. Just ask Andrew Tate. But, you know, sometimes, though, I feel like when companies are also being like, you need to be brand-friendly, you need to be ad-friendly, you need to be money-friendly, you need to be marketable, and you gotta be funny, you know... You have so much constraints in your little bottle of shit that at the end of the day, the best that you can do is just try to make sure it's not marketable to kids, but don't go over 18 because then you lose your monetization. You have to find some weird middle ground where a 16-year-old person could be like, okay, I could hear that at school. Or uh, the other option is you get enough people to push the barrier just slightly enough for them to start backing up because um historically that's what we did with tv um yeah. one of my favorite i have the, i have an awesome example of this um when tv first started there was a very important rule that you couldn't shoot someone on tv mm -hmm. that was one of the most like shooting someone on tv would get you like blacklisted as a director so what directors did in shows like Bonanza, The Rifleman starring Chuck Connors, it would be you would have a, a camera look at someone firing a gun, and then you would have a second camera point to the person getting shot. So technically, it wasn't someone getting shot in the same screen. 
And so many people saw that and then repeated that, that all the way up, I believe, until the 70s, all of a sudden they're like, okay, everyone's doing it. Let's just allow it. Yeah. And you see all these rules change. Um, uh, an even funnier rule, and this is related to the SRB, is that for early kids games that involved like violence, this is why you see a lot of um, shooting aliens or zombies games is because they could not show the color red as blood. It had to be something that wasn't relatable as blood. Same with like the weapons always being like laser blasters or rocket launchers because a kid wouldn't realistically have it. Yeah. I mean, even talking about old TV for a second too, like, um, you know, someone who I very much idolize, both in I think the way I present myself and present comedy is Betty White. She is the TV legend, the GOAT, the everything you ever thought about. You know, her and her husband, Alan Ludden, I filed their career for the longest time. I might be 23, but I'm allowed to like old password, all right? Anyways, but, you know, the one thing that she did that really pushed boundaries a lot was her influence to tell people that she didn't care. Because a lot of people may not know this, but Betty White had a original show called The Betty White Show. And she would do segments of people who uh, would want to do their talents on there. And there was an episode where she shown a uh, an African American individual doing like a tap dance or a dancing routine, you know, and she loved it. And you know, but media networks were not about it. They're like, yeah, we don't think this would be really good. We don't want him being back on the show if he's on another segment. Can we cut him out? You know. And Betty White was like, I'm Betty White. So she then made like almost an entire episode or an, a, a, like a full ass segment, like a long segment about this individual dancing again and explaining on how much she loves it and loves the culture and stuff that sh her show actually got completely banned from all networks. She lost her show from it. But because of that, though, welcome to uprights and welcome to people, you know, understanding that when people say, you know, love, love everyone like. Betty White was that example. And if I'll be very honest, there was not a lot of shows back in the 60s and 70s that actually had a lot of Amer uh, African-American presence on it. But it was notably game shows and the stuff that happened with Betty White that where African-American individuals were really going on there. I mean, in the early 70s, you had... Unless if you were a star, by the way. Like if you were a star like Sammy Davis, Sammy Davis Jr. or someone else like that, they were always on TV or movies, right? But we're talking Anyone about on the Midnight Soul Train. Yeah, I mean that that's a perfect example of, of the of like allowing people to express themselves. Like that show was just amazing. I I miss a lot of, a lot of those type of shows, and I mean, don't get me started on Richard Dawson's kissing. But we that, I think that's a whole other thing for a different time. Uh, to make it very simple, uh, the original host of Family Feud, his name was Richard Dawson. Uh, he was known for playing a person on tv on uh what was it called hogan's heroes or something like that oh uh, and so the, the one thing he did to help calm contestants down for being scared is that he would kiss them on the cheek but the network was like yo stop doing that that's this isn't this isn't brand safe this ain't good and so he went out one day so you know they they had the intro to the show you guys know the family feud intro by the way it's like let's start the family feud and here's your fucking host here's fucking steve harvey and shit right you know they had a more tame version for richard Dawson and everyone else before steve harvey but you know but so they would do the intro and one day he came out and he's like so the producers talked to me after our last show about the whole kissing thing so i want the american public to write to our network every single person who who read who watches this show for in favor of kissing or not in favor of kissing. And they had thousands of letters, bro. They had to sit down and go through them. And and a good majority, I think it was I think it was like 70/30 or 80/20 in favor of kissing. Because I mean, this was also Ooh. the first time where you saw like a white man, you know, kissing an African American or a Indian or any other culture lady. Right. This is the first time you really saw that on national TV. And, you know, obviously the contestants were, were pre screened. Like, are you OK with Richard kissing you? Some people did opt out of it, which was totally understandable. Some people have religious reasons why, which is no problem. You know, Richard fully understand that when, you know, we talk about religion and stuff. But, you know, 
like the the power of telling your star that you can't do anything and the star rebuttaling is a whole thing that you don't really see today. If if a network tells you to not to do something, you you know, it's just like it's just like a, a a day job. Like, oh, if you don't stop showing up to to work 0.24 seconds late, we can replace you in 5 seconds. All right, do it. Replace me. Huh, I'm still working on this job. It's three years later. They said they were going to replace me. When are they going to do that? <laughs> so it just shows people that sometimes you have to give some pushback to show people that, hey, we we mean business, and I'm here trying to make an entertaining thing, or I'm here busting my ass, yada, yada, yada. You know, but the early days of TV really – you. so you're, you're completely right. Push boundaries, push the way that network's done things. And obviously nowadays you can see people fucking doing porn on TVs now for even going that deep, but that's for different channels. <laughs> that's if yep. you want to pay for some good money for it. So, anyways, <laughs> we should probably get back to like what we're actually doing here today. We're now just having yeah. a full on interview. This is actually kind of fun. I like this. this is, I like this one on one format. This is really fun. Yeah. Um, so I guess a, a more professional question I should probably ask you is uh, what really got you started in creating art? It, was there a defining moment that you can remember that really got you into it? Or were you always someone who like kind of like looked around and you were like, wow, that, that looks really cool. And if you maybe put that with that, that could be really cool. And like having it like an artist's brain in a way. Um, so this is, a, it's a mix of the two. Um, I originally wanted to be an animator. I wanted to make cartoons. I wanted to make worlds. I wanted to write stories, write, do a bunch of stuff like that. And I have the book, The Animator Survival Guide, in my closet. I could pull it out right now, and I and I can explain to you and point to every page and be like, this is why I can't be an, an animator. <laughs> like, there's this, there's a meme on Twitter that goes around about it where uh, the first page is uh, you can't listen to music while you're animating because you can't focus on it. And I think every artist knows that's a straight out call out to them <laughs> when they're trying to do art that they can't listen to music. But um, that's the original thing is I wanted to be an animator. And it turns out my dad wanted to be an animator hmm. because when I mentioned this to him, because uh, a little bit of pretense here, uh, I do have that visual brain. I see movement and my brain knew what, I guess my brain understood what a motion tween was, or not a tween, uh, an, a, a between frame or a stretch frame before like I had learned what that actually was. And I had asked my dad about this. And my dad went to his room and he pulled out this old, like, like this old degraded notebook. Uh, he's a, he, he's like an immigrant from another country, so... This is an old, has survived many flights, many... This is a memory for him. And it's basically an animated tracing from, like, an old Bruce Lee, hidden tiger, crouching dragon kind of thing. And it's this beautifully animated karate fight. Hmm. Beautifully animated. And it's in a, it's in a flip book, and I'm just like wow like because i'm like a nine-year-old kid who doesn't really understand so i'm just like whoa and my dad's like uh-huh yeah and uh my dad really tried to get into that uh he he always wanted me to go into animation uh in fact there's this i could tell a story but let's move on for now because i'll keep on going on a track of this you go on the ramble of the day <laughs> yeah yeah that's really cool. Right. So, have you ever thought about going to like? I know like Disney has like a program where you can like go and like learn how to, like I think like things like drawing, animating, stuff like that. One of my friends who used to work with me is like in that program right now. Have you ever thought about going through that program and just seeing how like you know how you would see like Disney do something and have like a big corp like a, I hate saying the word corporation, how a big company kind of does their things or how they kind of feel about it. So I feel like in college, and not calling out colleges, I'm calling out colleges here, um, how, they really, Same. how they really don't do well with teaching, um, where I feel like this Disney course will actually kind of like teach people something. For people like me who are terrible at drawing, 
you know, I could probably decently draw at the end of it, you know, with how they kind of present everything. So have you ever looked in into that at all? And have you ever thought about like, you know what, I'll go for a semester and, you know, see what it's all about. I've thought about it. Um, but I'm going to, this is where I became an artist instead of an animator is when I went to college to learn about fine art. I realized, and this is going to be the most, this is going to be the most, oh, yes, fine art kind of thing that I say. <laughs> oh, yes, you bougie man. Okay. You can, there was a magic to this that I, 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 I learned this at college and I thought it was interesting. You can tell an entire story with one image. You don't need a full animation for that. And if you can successfully tell that story with one image, you're a great artist. If you create a world, if you pique people's imagination. And I thought that was more interesting. And I, when I studied more into it, uh, this is as I point to the painting that I painted back there. Ignore that because that's not a good example of what I'm about to say. But I... Uh, There's this interesting part here because this is where the visual brain kicks in and where my imagination runs wild. There's a mix in video games in this as well. But my artistic brain is like, you can pique people's imagination in art. You don't need to animate. Though that's fun. I do occasionally animate and it's usually fun little stupid stuff like um, I'm trying to think of an animator who does similar stuff. Uh, teleport Teleporte on twitter and youtube if you've ever seen his work i hope i pronounced his name right he does like little fun quirky animations but i wanted to do stuff where it was like beautiful so i i i, I would be down to do animation and i'm actually going back to college for video production and animation is some of the classes in that college <laughs> so you i'll be learning eventually soul. You poor soul. I, it's free ride. Okay, you know what? I'll be nice <laughs> about that one. I'll be nice about that. Yeah. One. It's a free ride. You know what? Go for it. As long yep, as you're I, not having to bring out your checkbook it, again for another 20 grand. Oh, yeah. No. See, that's the worst part is um, I went to a private college for fine art, so it's scary expensive, and I do not want to say how much it is, but it is very scary. I'll, so give, you guys, I'll, I'll give you guys a, a hint. A community college can cost you around 10 to 15 grand, I think, is a very reasonable starting price point. Since a lot of times when you go, you go for two years, right? So you're spending around five to $6,000 per year for all the books that you need your student licenses and everything else like that right once you need to add anything else like art where you have to have art supplies or science where you have where the school has to buy shit and you have to use it and stuff like that they incorporate all of that into your pricing like all of that but they don't tell you that they just tell you that this is just for the books and material and your teacher being really well known and stuff like that no it's because the school yep. needs to make their money so all i'm going to say is that community college is probably around 15 grand you go to a public uh, sorry a, a private school especially in arts because they over screw you in arts i swear to god but in arts you're 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 paying like forty grand. I'm sorry, but you're paying around forty grand, depending on where you go. If you go to like a really like a really really good place, you're paying high dollar. But yeah, yeah, I'll say it just so you guys know. Um, so four years at a private art school for me was fifty five thousand dollars. See, I wasn't too far off per, <laughs> per year. <laughs> College is such a scam. I'm sorry. I'm not nothing oh, against you're fine. nothing against anybody, but shit, college is such a fucking scam. Especially here's the thing is you can learn almost everything that you want to at college, but you can also just learn it online. 
You can YouTube like, uh, anything. You have right. Google. You there's even like um Skillshare, which is so much cheaper. There's so Ooh. many other sites that actually can teach you this shit for hardly Preach. any money. Please, like, like, please. I don't care that de- Grandpa Biden is giving you all ten thousand dollar debt relief. You know what? I didn't go to college, so I don't got to worry about debt. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna tell you all this right now. Everything that I learned in video production, editing, mic pronunciation, audio stuff like that, I learned all of it by just doing it. I bought the hardware, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sit down and learn how to do shit. And once I get better at something, or once I am able to pay someone to do something for me, it'll be ultimately any much better. Yep. So that's a that's a oh. Luigi life tip for you. Yep. And if you specifically want to start learning about art, a very good channel that you should check out just to understand culture and art and making uh, world relations between things. Look up Jason J- Jason Geller or Jacob Geller. I'm butchering his name. Look up Fear of Cold video on YouTube and you'll find the, the YouTuber I'm talking about. Amazing start for just learning how to see everything is art because it's not just art it's video games it's movies this is all art you don't need to go to a bougie college to be to tell you what's art if you like it it's art yeah i mean same same thing i tell all my musical friends because i did band for 10 plus years i did marching band for four like you know there are times where people catch me like listening to a song and i'm like is this is this using a three four speed? Is this is this using a different <laughs> you know you know like but like whenever you do anything like that where you learn how intricate something is, your brain switches into a whole different mode, especially whenever you're interested in it. You know, you just see a whole different range. So it's it's wild. It's wild. That's all I can say. Yeah. I mean Ooh. shit, as a content creator. You look at your entire life as content. What would be really good for this video? What could could I use this unboxing as a good video? Could I could I hold this project off just for a little bit so I can make it in, into content? Like you look at yourself every single day and be like, "What can I make content? What is content? How do I yeah. content?" You know. You you it's... you You label this stream as like I interviewed this artist who ruined my stream, and then it's a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, face! <laughs> Just looking over, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, Just some weird, catchy thumbnail you have to have. Um, <laughs> clickbait! Oh, clickbait! How we love clickbait. Anyways, I love it. All right, so. I think this will be the last like big question I have for you before we get into the actual part of the stream. Only you know an hour and twenty minutes in, of actually looking yeah. at the emotes. Um, right. But what actually got you uh, into uh, streaming, or I guess new age content creation, if you want to call it that way? But since I mostly know you for streaming, uh, what really what really got you into streaming? Ooh. Um. So it's funny because I wanted to be a YouTuber first. Uh, so when I grew up into YouTube, it was like, I watched tons of YouTubers. Uh, I'm going to name some that people who are, who watch streaming probably don't know or remember, but Tobuscus is the first one that comes to mind. Okay. That's the era of YouTubers I'm in. So when I think of like let's players and stuff, I wanted to do stuff like that. And then I started like thinking like, okay, well, everyone's gaming how do I differ? And I started watching YouTubers like Nostalgia Critic, Angry Video Game Nerd, reviewing channels of things of that I liked. Um, John Tron's on that list as well. Uh, I wanted to do stuff like that. And then I realized YouTube right now is mad. It's crazy. Everyone's complaining on it. Uh, I to be topical the first the trending video like from a few days ago was YouTube racist or f- plays favorites 
on YouTube's number one trending. And that should probably tell someone like, hey, something's wrong with YouTube. And also witnessing stuff that happened on YouTube, like Elsagate, I was like, nope, we're going to streaming. Twitch looks like a much more friendly community. I can be a lot more social and do a lot more collabs with people. That sounds amazing. So I went to Twitch. Discoverability, <laughs> discoverability, payments. Um, what else do I can? I, what else can I say? Um, who? Yeah. Um, Twitch is Twitch is great. Like Twitch is great for strictly streaming only. <laughs> um, yes. But I will be hundred percent honest when I say this. And I think a lot of other content creators are finally speaking up about this. Uh, just like with YouTube, Twitch has their favorites. Uh, just yes. just recently, I don't know if you guys heard the news story. Uh, as I'm doing some drama, hey guys, it's Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. Twitch <laughs> is going crazy right now with this clip of a girl getting fucked in her stream. But no, that legitimately <laughs> happened. Wait, what? <laughs> so there was a, a Twitch streamer who was reading chat. And there was a window, and well, the guy started doing some some little sus stuff, and so. But here's the thing, though, um, Twitch. I think uh, I don't know how many days the ban is. I haven't seen a proper final announcement yet. But to my knowledge, it's only a seven day ban. But for people who didn't do something or they did do something, but they like completely apologized and made up with the streamer stuff like that, they're still completely banned. The, the difference about Twitch, and, and I'm saying this as a Twitch streamer, Twitch will only care about their top 1%. If you are anything Holy. below the top 1%, they don't give a shit about you. Uh, my good buddy, Lala the Clown, got banned for no reason whatsoever. Even though people thought it was like like because he did like a song that could have been sexual or whatever, he didn't do a song that was sexual. He got banned for no reason, and guess what? Never they never gave him a reason why he got banned. He just it's just he got banned, and he had to appeal it, and you know, Twitch had to go through the whole appeal process, and oh. you know, and obviously I don't I don't want this to ever like tell people I don't stream on Twitch. Like Twitch is in my opinion still the best platform to do live streaming on. Um, Facebook gaming is okay. Glimish is up and rising, but the thing is that they're still a startup company. They're still startup tech, and there's a lot of hurdles with not a lot of viewers. So you're kind of either wasting your breath on there sometimes, or you have to like really have your community claw them over there. Um, but I think the biggest thing is that uh, I, th I finally think that Twitch is finally realizing that YouTube is actually a proper competitor. Because I will be honest, um, I actually have been streaming more on YouTube than I have on Twitch recently. And I've gotten, in my opinion, much more engagement on there. I've gotten more engagement. I've gotten more people to at least click on and say hi. And some people click off and stuff. That's totally fine. But the likes have been good. The views have been good. And a very good secret is that a lot, I think everyone knows about the, the YouTube rules. That you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time to become monetized. Well, live streaming does count towards those 4,000 watch hours. So if you constantly stream twice or three times a week for five to eight hours a day and have five to ten people watching you, you could get you can get monetization within a year or two if you have enough subscribers and hours watched. So, and I got to be honest too, like I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. I'm a Twitch affiliate, everyone. So I'll say it right now. I'm a Twitch affiliate. I make money by doing, you know, streams and stuff through subs and stuff like that. And whatever I'm saying, I'm saying it because it's the truth and it's already information that's publicly out there. Uh, this is not anything secretive. It's already out there in the public. Many bigger streamers have talked about it. On Twitch, you get a 50-50 revenue split. So if you spend $4.99 on a tier one sub, the streamer gets $2.50 and Twitch gets $2.50. When you become a partner, you can negotiate that to be higher, obviously, since because you had exclusivity. Well, Twitch just made a rule that all partners and now also you know, partners, affiliates, whatever, are no longer exclusive on Twitch, which means that I could stop going live right now on on Twitch 
and go live on YouTube in 10 minutes. And that's completely per perfectly fine now. Now, I can't multi-stream on there, so I can't do the, the Twitch and YouTube stream together, which I really want to do. But their reasoning was it might have a suboptimal experience. And I'm telling them that it'll be suboptimal because of the streamer actually could be making money on different platform. But if I really had the thousand followers on TikTok, I could I could actually stream what we're doing right now while we're live doing this on Twitch onto TikTok and Instagram Live because they're mobile platforms and not they're not as worried about mobile platforms. Oh. So Twitch has some W's, but also, too, if you look at any company, if you look at Meta, which is Facebook and Instagram, if you look at Twitter, if you look at YouTube, if you look at Twitch, they have a lot of just gray area things that they're not going to tell you in depth, which means that when you sign that affiliate agreement, you need to read very carefully on if you actually really want to have it or not. I wanted to have Twitch partner for years. Like I, I did those, you know, road to partner pushes and stuff like that. And personally, I... I actually stopped wanting to have partnership because the amount of hours you need to stream to be a partner and consistently be a partner is outrageous. Uh, Ludwig actually had a beautiful yep. video on why he left Twitch, and I fully agree with that. And there's a lot of big Twitch people moving to YouTube because YouTube is a more compelling offer. They're able to be more creative. They don't have to be stuck in, in a certain game all the time. And the nice thing, too, is that YouTube will pay them whether they have – a thousand people watching or ten thousand people watching. They're paying them whatever contract they signed for their YouTube exclusivity contract. That's the money that they're making, and that's not on top of getting memberships, gifted memberships, super chats, super stickers, and uh, also ad revenue from all videos that they make. So if you're wanting to actually monetize yourself to make this be a living. In my personal opinion, YouTube is your better way to go nowadays. Twitch is great, and I love Twitch, but with a lot of the rumors I've recently been been seeing, one of the rumors came true, and there are five rumors. If rumor number three does come true, I will not be on this platform anymore. I'm saying that outright. I will not be on the platform anymore because that rumor is that all partners would only make 50-50 split. And that, in my opinion, would be BS because if you're going to make me stream 40 hours a week on Twitch, you know, basically having to do six, eight-hour days, if you're going to make me do that to be on this platform, I am not going to stay on here. And you know what? For YouTube, if I get a contract, cool. If not, hey, once I get the 1,000 followers and the 4,000 watch hours, I can monetize every single video that I want to. I can monetize YouTube shorts, which have been popping on my channel off right now. I can monetize the live streams, and it's so much easier. And YouTube only takes a 30% cut. It is a 70-30 split, which in my opinion, I'm about to say this, my opinion, it should be 70-30 split everywhere. And, I, and obviously, I understand from a business spam point that Twitch is its own entity of Amazon. Obviously, I know that. I know how companies and corporations work. I used to run a computer shop. I know how they work. I know how they're completely different entities. But the problem being is that Daddy, Daddy Amazon had a lot of money. And Daddy Amazon can, you know... Take a hundred grand and just throw it over to Twitch if they want to. Twitch's expenses are not as high as what they really think they are. And credit card transactions aren't as bad as what they think it is. When you become a bigger company, you lose more percentages. I used to have to pay 5% per every credit card with my computer business. But obviously as I grew more in customers, I was able to negotiate down to three, down to two, down to one. Right? Because you negotiate. And I think that's the one thing that Twitch is finally understanding that people want to make this a career. People want to come on and try their hand on it. But also, too, let's be honest, the people who are at the top, they also started a long time ago and people know their faces. You know, a lot of newer people that I've met through the streaming platform is taking them three or four years of doing partner work realistically to become a Twitch partner. And I'm meaning by getting on every single day except for like maybe one or two days a week for them to do a YouTube video or whatever and streaming eight to ten hours a day and just the complete grind that it has to be. 
my again my advice to everyone is just that if you're wanting to make this a monetization thing obviously streaming i have to say it like this do not go into streaming thing that you're going to be able to monetize anything because at the end of the day you should be doing streaming because it's fun i'm doing this because i enjoy talking to people i enjoy the aspect of twitch i enjoy the i enjoy my community i'm not here for the money now while yes i am going to say like hey money does help me out money does buy video games and new microphones and better equipment for the streams that's also because the community gives it to me where i feel like on youtube i don't have to push so hard for subs and bits and primes and everything like that because i'm making my own money off of it and people who want to do a gift a membership if they want to I can also set my own price. So let's say I don't want to charge four ninety nine for a tier one membership. Maybe I want to make it two ninety nine. That way, people who don't have that really good exposable income could spend two ninety nine and still have these amazing custom emotes we're going to show you guys, and be a part of the community and get you know behind the scenes content, all that type of shit that I could offer. So there's there's a lot to it. Obviously, you guys buy till I there's. When when you when when you start to when you actually want to make this as a career path, like you know, obviously you guys know I I quit Target for, you know, both health reasons and my family and stuff like that. But this is now my main gig. Is this? I don't have a day job on top of this. I I take care of the house and my family and stuff like that while I'm off stream. And obviously I'm making YouTube content and TikTok content and stuff. So. I hate to say that it is a full-time job, but it is a full-time job in on itself, not including the people like, you know, like me who had a part-time job where you're working 40 hours a week to make, you know, 500 bucks a month, you know? So, a, yeah. A very good way to look at streaming and stuff as a job is that an, anything, like, so if you look at partner as the professional, now this is coming from someone who's a, a substantially having a much more outsider perspective than you because you've had a lot more time into this yeah but the way that i've compared like partner and affiliate and just that kind of stuff with streaming and trying to monetize your work a really good way to think about it is that if this job is a creative job you streaming up until partner is you building a portfolio and you getting partner is you when you can say you are a professional it, like if we compare this to an artist job Artists also make commissions showing their art in museums at 50-50 or 70-30 deals. You have to negotiate that if you're a good enough artist and you build a portfolio so you can show to them that you know what you're doing. And then on top of that, when you're working at a museum, that's when you know, hey, I'm an artist. So they're all creative jobs. This is a really good way of looking at it, especially because with the way that we have Twitch now where you have to work and work and work and work and work and work to get partner and it feels like it's not paying off. Look at it that way. If you want to be a bit more positive on it. Yeah. I mean, in the same way that you use art, I can use music. I used to play in, in a few bands and stuff like that. And some of the gigs we would get paid for and some of the gigs, we just have to use it as a way to platform our, you know, Spotify, YouTube or whatever. Right. And you know, even my time in the band was very small, but it was still very fun. But, you know, at the same time, the way that he says it is completely correct. A lot of time, the split is 50-50. Any tips that you would make, anything like that, you would have to give 50 to the owners and 50 to yourself. And then you had to split that between the five other members, so you're really getting 10% each, you know. There's a lot on that. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, I, I actually did a, a painting for a local Mexican restaurant, you know, and I did that a few years ago. I mean, it, it's... It's still there, which is very nice. They never took it down, which makes me very happy. But obviously, the difference is we didn't really get paid for it. We pretty much were just able to put our signatures on there, and you know, every time that we would go there, they would give us you know free food, free drinks, or whatever. So it was pretty much a food for project. So, but yeah, so I guess for, to, I guess I I can always say this too, and, and I think artists and musicians can agree with me on this too, is that. For you to make your make your I guess make either make yourself or make your work feel like it's entitled is you have to be able to make your work for multiple ways. So some people, you know, in their art industry, they do painting, some people do photography, some people do video editing. And all that part is considered art. Even music is art. And so when you talk about the arts category, there's so much that you can do with art, which is fantastic. And with streaming, it's the same thing. But 
The one big difference, though, I feel like I can say about streaming and like YouTube content creation, TikTok content creation, is about your trending things. And now in art, there is a lot of trend shit. I will be 100% honest. Art is legitimately the king of trend. And I don't know why either. Like, you, you can have one shirt style be around for two years, then one shirt style be around for two months. And that was the trend, right? You know, and that's and I think that's that's even popular both in, in, in photography, painting, portraits, anything that you could do. Painting, not painting, uh, arts have their own, like, ex, like expiring type shit. And with Twitch and YouTube, it's kind of the same thing. You have to find your niche. Once you find your niche, you need to find a decently played game that has not too many people watching, but people who are still watching and try to make your way to grow on top of that and then be the best streamer in that category. Then you can become a variety streamer and try to do reactions on top of it and other games with it too. And so... You know, you you have to hone in your craft so specifically that you have to kind of learn everything. You know, hmm. so it's it's there's a lot of ways you can you can look at you know either streaming content creation, arting, you know whatever you want to do, whatever you say. There's always going to be multiple ways to do something. So, uh, it. I'm sorry. I, I need to say this real quick because now it's on my brain and I need to say it out loud. Say it, yeah. I can't I can't wait for fifty years from now when we have people who've studied Twitch and are able to look back and be like, mm, yes, this was the hot tub period for you for Twitch. This was the just chatting t period for Twitch. In this particular period, streamers like Vine Sauce were at the top of their game. Like I cannot wait for them for people to be able to professionally talk like that. And like, I think that would be interesting. But uh, the other thing is, uh, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, was that they're like switching over to YouTube and stuff for better monetization. Yeah. Um, the one argument that I will say is that Twitch, unfortunately, in this case, has the better tools. And they for do. example, the reason that I wanted to be on Twitch versus YouTube is the emotes. But I do have a counter for you, though. Remember, when I come into these debates, I always have ways to talk to you about this. All right. You So you know how on Twitch you obviously have affiliate, right? Well, in YouTube stance, they now have a thing called the join button. Your join button is your Twitch affiliate. So you get custom emotes in chat and super chat abilities, which are your bit abilities and stuff like that. So while, yes, I fully agree that when when YouTube Live first came out, they had none of that type of shit. They didn't even have a way to, for you to rate or host somebody. And they're even working on that as they speak right now. But there, I will be 100% honest saying that, yes, there are actually emotes now on YouTube. And I don't know if Sophia is still in here, but Sophia can can back me up on this on the cop card stream. If you guys go and become a member on there, uh, they have custom emails that you can use in chat and each custom emo is considered 10 words in the chatting thing. So sorry, I don't want to prove you wrong. I, I'm not, I'm not here to prove anyone wrong, make anyone feel oh. bad, but I, I do want to mention that. And there's a big reason why I am so intrigued on YouTube now. And the reason why I stayed on Twitch for so long was because of emotes. But now that I've learned that gaming channels that are a thousand subscribers or more and have the four thousand hour watch times, they can get a join button if they are a gaming dedicated channel. If you're a different channel, I think you have to have like forty k subs. I don't know the whole rules on that yet, but I know for sure like if I get a thousand subs and four k people uh, to you know hourly watch or whatever that monetization bullshit is, you can get a join button, which is pretty much your Twitch subscribe button, but Twitch well, it looks but, like I might make a YouTube soon. <laughs> but YouTube, though, <laughs> I will say this though: there is still a one up on Twitch. Is Twitch Prime? There is still a one up, and I will be honest for that. But again, my one up for that too for YouTube side is the is the creator themselves can make their own tiers, their own prices. I can't control the tiers on Twitch because if I could, I would. I would not make it four ninety nine. I'll be hundred percent honest with you guys. I would make, I would make tier three twenty bucks, tier two ten bucks, and tier one three dollars. Um, and just being hundred percent honest, because 
you know, if I'm already going to take a 50-50 split, cool, I'm going to lose another what? Dollar? Like, what am I really going to do with that dollar? Like, you know, and Twitch is already making rule changes where they're actually going to make it to where now when you hit $50 versus $100, you just now get a payout. That's being, you know, done in different territories and stuff right now. But there's just so much, and especially with, you know, Twitch incentivizing ads. And what I mean by incentivizing is if you don't run three-minute ads on your streams, you get the less revenue cut. And I mean the revenue cut for ads is already low. But if you do the three-minute ads, like, I mean, I'll be honest. I run the three-minute ads because I actually have a proper incentive to do it. I get a 25% better cut. Being 100% honest with you guys. And so for me, when I run ads every 30 minutes on the stream and people get mad at me for the ads, I have to explain to them that these ads are paying for the people who don't want to subscribe and help the channel out. And luckily for YouTube, YouTube ads aren't really a big thing. Like you might get an ad when you first, you know, join in the channel or whatever. But other than that, though, there's no ads throughout the streams and anything else like that. Because guess what? When you're done, you can they immediately turn into a video. And if you're just a streaming channel, or you can make two YouTube channels where one YouTube channel is just your streaming stuff, and then the other YouTube channel is your you know short form slash you know everyday content. You have two vo sources of revenue right there. So, just this got very boring. I'm so sorry, guys. But for, <laughs> for any, for you know, but I guess this is good for you too. I mean, you 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 know, you are very new about the streaming and stuff, and you know, yeah. so. But and also too, like, I'll be 100 percent honest too. TikTok Live is actually doing really fucking good. I mean, really that, good. I fully believe that. So. My 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 thing for 2022 for all new streamers who want to do anything, and this is you included, you need to have five accounts. You need a YouTube, a Twitch, a TikTok, an Instagram, and a Twitter. I know you already have Twitter and uh, Twitch already. You need to also have a somewhat form of Instagram, either by making Instagram reels or Instagram stories, or just posting pictures of your art and stuff and make it like a business page. Uh, and obviously, TikTok right now is super marketable because, let's be honest here, what's the age demographic on people who are watching TikTok? The same demographic for here. <laughs> the same demographic for Twitch and even for YouTube, if we're being very honest here. And especially with YouTube shorts being pushed heavily by the algorithm, which was said by the CEO herself. I make one TikTok like, I, I, for example, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I don't mind reading numbers. I don't give a shit. Y'all forget that, that if this account dies, I got my YouTube channel. So <laughs> y'all forget about this shit. But so my latest TikTok that I made, which was about a Mario Maker 2 level that broke me, uh, it has 90 views on TikTok, which is okay. I mean, I've had some better posting videos on there. But the same video on YouTube Shorts... I'm, re I'm loading up the page. One second, guys. <laughs> Sorry. The internet kind of hates me when I'm streaming. Let's be honest here. The same YouTube shorts. 884 views. Well, that's a jump. So, the only thing that sucks about shorts is that shorts does not count for your 4,000 hours of watch content. But YouTube has announced that they are making their new shorts fund, which will be a completely separate entity than your ad revenue and your AdSense. So for me, it's like, well, shit, if I could possibly get, a, a you know, some money off of doing YouTube shorts until I can get my ad revenue, like, that's really fucking cool. And also, we're steadily growing on TikTok. You guys love the Family Feud live video, and you guys also love the Sonic 1 video of me just being shit. So, you know, those have really brought in a lot of new followers. And I feel like we're getting about 10 followers for every new video, which is great for me. Um, you know. By the way, yeah. if you're a new streamer right now and you're watching this, take notes. <laughs> Free. I should be charging you guys all a fee for being in here right now. We're 29. I need a tier three sub right now if you want more <laughs> hints and tricks. I don't Welcome give a to shit. Luigi's Twitch Masterclass. <laughs> I don't. Shit, I'm doing better than Ninja right now. That's all I'm going to fucking say. Jesus Christ. 
Ninja, I love you, buddy. You and you know, I I love the entire crew that Ninja plays with Courage, Tim, everyone else like that. But I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Masterclass did you dirty, and I think you know this by now because half of your content is recycled and recycled and recycled and recycled badly. And whenever you say the words, you can look up a tutorial on the internet. That's when I know I wasted my three hundred dollars because you're supposed to show me how to become a streamer. Yep. So, yeah. If you want free, if if you want YouTube hints too, you know, bring them at me. But the one thing I will say though is that uh, MKBHD has a masterclass about videography, and a lot of people Ooh. tell me it's amazing. For anyone who doesn't know who MKBHD is, he is an amazing tech YouTuber. Um, he reviews, you know, cars, phones. Uh, he also like talks about all the new tech that comes out. And also he is a big, you know, camera nerd. He, he knows a lot about the lenses, a lot about what they can do. So MKBHD is a really good, uh, YouTuber that I try to follow for storytelling in a way, for trying to find a way to tell a comparing, uh, a compelling story. That's not dragging you guys through an entire mud pit until the last second, you know, having all the ups and downs and high roads and stuff. So, yeah, you got to take inspiration from other people. If you don't, then you're doing it wrong. As Ludwig put it uh, very fairly, is you just have to do the yoink method. Find something that you like, twist it into your own weird way, and post it on the internet. There's a famous quote by uh, the guy, I can't remember his name now, it's the dude who wrote Tom Sawyer. It's that the original idea is dead. We're no longer making original ideas. We are just shattering stained glass and making new stuff from the twisted kaleidoscope. Same thing. Yeah. It's great. Anyway. So there you guys go. Some some master classes. So en enjoy that. And you know you guys got it for free. I, I I even for this interview turned off ads for you guys. What I mean that this is a completely free stream. I ain't joking around. Also, I think for interviews, it's polite to turn off the ads, too, because that way it's not interrupting the thing for other people. I think it's very fair. That's fair. I'm free. <laughs> You're free. All right. Well, I guess yep. it's it's finally time to, to do this, which is showing off the emotes now for the whole... Yes. I don't, know, even know, I don't even know how many people are watching. Probably one person. For the whole one person that's watching the stream, we probably went onto, onto a huge tangent. Um, yep. Actually, let, let's do this. <laughs> Can I get an active chat? An active check in chat. If you're here, if you're listening, if you're vibing to the stream, could I just get a hiya, please, so I can see who is all here. But with this, um, I should probably also mention this too. The emotes that I I have right now that are that we still have on the channel for today are emotes that I made in Photoshop, and they're actually pixel art. I took I legitimately ripped sprites from Mario. And just wrote words and shit on it. And like, yeah, this is good enough. <laughs> I don't want people to think I'm not doing emotes, so it's good enough. So, but yeah. I think you guys are going to love these emotes to death. So, I am going to add a new source. I'm going to open up the first one, and I will add a new source so you guys can see it properly. Uh, source, source, source. Window capture. There it is. Uh, photos. Yes. Now are you on the screen or not? Of course you're not because you suck. Do 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 do. <laughs> Just slowly see how meta I can go by just showing my phone in and seeing it repeat seven oh, times don't in worry. the stream. I, I can make meta happen super quickly. I just got to move Discord, <laughs> and you will see a big meta. Oh, boy. The newest Twitch meta out there. I, I don't know why it's not showing up on stream. This is supposed to work. It's probably because I'm using a Microsoft Ooh. thing. It's probably why, for being very honest here. Microsoft fair. does, in a way, hate me. Window capture. Also fair. Just call window capture. Ooh. Yeah, that. Oh, so that while he's looking one. that up, 
while he's looking that up real quick, uh, as the guy who made them, I really hope you enjoy them. <laughs> I might say some words now. I might say some words now. These words are not <laughs> going to be very good, so I'm going to need to be very careful. Uh, here, uh, I'll I'll say some words for you. Um, okay. Orange, banana. Ooh, that's a good word. Kiwi. A that's kumquat. Kumquat. <laughs> which is okay. Real quick, I need while while we're doing this, we're gonna go on a slight tangent. Oh, go for it. Have, have you ever seen what a kumquat looks like? Yes, it is great. Why are they just grape oranges? I don't know. Also, I don't know why this isn't working. It shows my cursor, but doesn't show the freaking image. Oh, you see my cursor, but you can't see the image. So I need to. Oh. Yeah, I see. Let me hold on. If I do this right, if I make it big, that didn't help shit. Okay. Oh. Oh. Does this work? If I open up this photo, does it work? Whatever you just dragged, you just quickly sneak peek something. Yeah. Because I don't think it's working. None of this is working. It's making me very mad. Oh, boy. Why, why is this even a thing? Like, it's a, it's a dot .png file. Why are you... Why is this not working at all? I don't get it. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, I need to stop looking at my phone and then back up at Discord, looking at the stream and then looking at Discord because I'm starting to get jet lag trying to understand the two things. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're going to have to do it like this. I'm not very happy with having to do it like this, but we'll have to. So I'll ask you, wh which one do you want to do first? Are you, are you wanting me to go in the order as they became downloaded or do you have like a specific order you want to do it in? Um, this, I think I kind of want to do them in the order that, that we, that I sent you them in, just because I uh, think it shows a good process of how this went. All right. So, so let me do this quickly. So it was, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I got the order right, right I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, okay. I think I, uh, I think I I have it right. We'll we'll see what happens. So Okay. If I if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, whatever. All right, so, ah, that's here, fine. so here we go, guys. So I'm going to have to do it like this. I'm very sorry I have to do it like this because you're going to see the bottom taskbar of my screen. I do apologize for that, friends. <gasps> but because the problem is if I hit on Discord, it goes away, which is stupid. So whatever. Yeah, that's okay. Right. But you, here we go, you guys. You had unregistered Hypercam on me earlier. That's very true. <laughs> and Hypercam is very important for this stream. Yes. So, yeah, so um, you guys probably know this by now, but I actually don't have a proper rage emote. Uh, so this is the first ever incarnation of a rage emote um, for my stream, because technically my rage emote is me doing this. <laughs> so I don't really think that's really rage, more of... You were, at a, you were at a Best Buy trying your iPhone 7 camera. Um, so... <laughs> Yes, but this is this is the the rage emo. So I should probably mention that I did send over the logo that has Retinue made and the profile picture that Graphics made for me, and use obviously sent them over to him as baselines that he could use for these emotes. So yeah, the rage emo. Uh, talk to me about it. How how did this uh, come inspire the way that it is today? Um. So. The Rage Emote is probably going to be the one that looks stylistically the farthest from the other ones, mainly because that one is closest to my drawing style. 
like that's just how I normally draw things is in that very is when you show it it people are going to mm -hmm. see what I mean but uh as I drew the as all the other ones there is obviously I figured out how to draw you more consistently but this one is the is the one I enjoy the most specifically because I did not know that yet um basically I draw a lot of things that look somewhat like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. So I wanted to try and get that kind Which of... Which works for me. I love Ed, and Angry. Eddie, so. I, I do love me some Ed, and Eddie. So trust me, guys. That I have no problem with Ed, and Eddie shit. Because let, 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 Because, I mean, also, I mean, I mean you're, you're a 98 baby. I'm a 99 baby. So it's like Ed, and Eddie was on Cartoon Network whenever we were around... It was always the the night of Ed and Eddie, Cody and Kids Next Door, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yep. And then you would switch over and and watch uh Bum 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 Dum Dum Yeah. King of the Hill. Yeah. Just King, King of the Hill, Family Guy, uh, Simpsons, if you're a Simpsons fan or not. Um then moving on to uh Robot Chicken, which also yep. was a very good show. Um also, for some weird reason, there was a time on I think it was Adult Swim where they actually like show like Japanese game shows or something like that. And I don't what? remember that, but I remember there was one time I was like watching TV in my bedroom. The next thing I know, I see these five people in a line, and it was a Japanese game where they had to like say a name of a character. Like for example, so if I said. Fairy odd parents characters, and let's say you know, I say Timmy. You can say Wanda, then Cosmo, Puff, um, uh, the mom, the dad, yeah, yeah. But let's say one uh, of us, one of us stumbles, right? There was a contraption at the bottom that was smack your balls. <laughs> what? No. And I'm on here like, huh? Ow. What? Huh? <laughs> The Meme Lord See, 42069, that's a perfect name. Do you play Mario? Yes, I do. We are deviating away from Mario and video games today. I have my emote artist uh, right over here, um, and we're going through our new emotes we got for the channel and kind of just hanging out, talking about life and stuff. So, But yes, I do. Uh, I do Mario, Sonic, Crash Bandicoot, pretty much any platforming game you will probably enjoy. And hey, thank you so much for the follow, the Meme Lord for 2069, as Luigi stares. Intensify. <laughs> Gets worse and worse every single time I do it. <laughs> it's also funny because I feel like a lot of people don't even know why I do that, but it's just like, should I ever, should I tell why I do it, or should I just leave it a mystery for a while? Like, it's, it's fun. All Honestly. I'll say is just remember, so my hint for everyone is... Disney direct to DVD home movies. That's it. All right. Anyways, moving on. There's your hints. Uh, <laughs> yep. So uh, yeah, but the Rage emote is it's perfect. I truly think it actually has the proper Im 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 embedded of my, of oh. my you know of my face. Uh, my tongue can't do the weird wire thing, but I think that's fine. Let's be honest here. My my tongue can't do a lot. It's it's uh, uh you know that's about it. So. I All think right. if I've seen someone do that in real life, I'd be very scared. <laughs> I would too, but also it'd be super cool to watch. Like, you can do that. <laughs> it would be like, <laughs> dance, puppet, dance, do it again. I want to see it again. <laughs> All right. So the next one that we have on here is depending on how well you are on meme culture for the Mario franchise, you may or may not know this by. Uh, his name is Ouija. Spelled W E E G E E, just like how I do the mini Ouija's, but I do um, W U I J I Ouija. Um, so the Ouija, very interesting. Because when you sent this to me, I was like, "What was the idea here?" And then you know, <laughs> I, I kind of understood that this was kind of more of a. The way that I look at it is, I the emails would be called what. Like W H A T, because if you really think about it, like whenever you you look at that emote, you th you you think that I'm gonna make a hot take, you know, <laughs> a take that yeah. <laughs> is either gonna be fat or cap, like you know. So yep. the, the the Ouija, I mean, you didn't. What what was your idea for it? Like, what was your brain? Well, so the the we the the Ouija 
just in general, when I think of it, I was like, okay, your character is Luigi. And I was trying to think, what is a very good like idea for something that's recognizable by people who maybe are just coming into the stream or have something that they remember from like when they think of Luigi. And I thought of two memes that m most people know Luigi of. They th I think of um, the bad stare one in Mario Kart when he's just giving people the stare down. And then I'm thinking of this one, which also, if you look on uh, Know Your Meme, if I remember correctly, this was also referred to as Luigi stare. Yeah, because it was either it was like Ouija, Ouija stare, Luigi stare. And for those who really don't know this, this was like the main Luigi meme from many different like things from like YouTube poops to a lot of uh, uh, shit post comics, just tons of rage comic stuff. This is like old school Luigi. And I thought it when I like just looked at the head, I was thinking to myself. This is either going to be. The random emote or this is going to be what you said like if you say a cold take and everyone doesn't agree with it it's going to be like what it's gonna be the i just felt like it was me. perfect for that hot takes yeah. only here in the chat you know okay so next one up we have do i have to go backwards for this one yes it's these guys so two of these were made one with a green hat and one with a pink slash red hat whatever you want to call it i think it's supposed, supposed to be pink but these are the new luigi love emotes so originally my luigi love emote was a pixel art luigi holding a power apart from mario odyssey and it and his arms were like this it looked like he was kind of giving it to you so this one looks like i'm trying to kiss somebody <laughs> it's like <laughs> ooh, come here streamer <laughs> You know, but there's no problem with that. I mean, hey, we're here on Twitch. You got to be part of the meta somewhere. Sometimes you just got to, you got to kiss certain things to get things to work, you know? Yep. Just like anywhere in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, literally the, the main thing of this emote was a uh, heart was the heart glasses specifically because I was like love emote and my mind was thinking of Hathaway. I immediately, like, I look at this emote and I legit just start thinking the the What Is Love song. I don't even want to try to say it because I don't know how DMCA works here. But you know what I mean. So this is where I am going to ask chat a question, though. Because, so personally, I like the one with the green hat the most. I feel like that's what fits more of the brand and stuff. But you guys are here for a reason. So I'm going to put a poll in chat. And you guys are actually going to get to choose which love emote you guys want. Either pink hat or green hat. And whichever one has the most amount of uh, likes to it is the one that we're, we're going to put in. I thought you were going to get ready to vote very quickly. <laughs> the way yeah. you're looking at your phone, like, I'm going to vote right now. Oh, Ooh. no, I'm abstaining Ooh. since I'm the artist. Oh, good. Proud of you. Yeah. I have to let the community speak for my art, you know? <laughs> very true. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. I have, I have the best thing for this. I'm not, I'm like right here. Oh, you're good. All right, chat, you guys have your, your pull-up. It's going to last for five minutes. If no one, if no one, oh, my gosh. If no one, if no one votes, it's the green hat. Just letting you guys know. If no one votes, it is the green hat. This vote is to give the pink hat a chance. Just for everyone <laughs> understands this. Um, so, yeah, you guys have five minutes to do that. So, Okay. It's all about the green hat anarchy. You understand. If you vote, you need to know. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. All right. Uh, so that. next one, if I'm correct, is this one, which is the uh, hype emote. Yes. So this one, I actually, um, this is, I think this is the only one where like, in my brain, it's like, I like it and I don't like it at the exact same time. But I like it for other <laughs> reasons. It's because when I see so many hype emotes, they always have like the word 
hype in there somewhere, which I kind of understand. That's why that's what it's meant to be. But I feel like having the shimmer on the glasses, I think it's what's called the shimmer on the glasses. The, or lens, the, flare. the lens flare. There it is. Lens flare on the, on the glasses and, and the nice big smile. I feel like, you know, that kind of works as a hype emote, you know, a, 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 a way that everyone can just show off their glasses and chat and stuff, you know. Let's be honest. When you when you get hype, do you say like, "Oh, I'm hype," or do you be like, "Yeah, shit, this shit, busting, busting." Like, which one right? do you do? <laughs> so, like for me, it's like I, cause, I, cause I guess the way whenever I I ask you for all these, I was looking at a lot of other artists as well too, and a lot of them had some different ideas and stuff. And it's like that's kind of cool, yep. but yours were the only one that actually stood out to me. Like what I mean by stood out, I yeah. mean they actually like. This is something that I would put on a T-shirt and have like do like the 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 badly pixelated gamer glasses and put like hype on it <laughs> on like on like yeah. a T-shirt, you know, and then just like name it Luigi hype or whatever, you know, because that's what the, that's how the, that's how I feel about that. Or you could cut out one of the eyes and put it on an older MacBook, so when you open up the MacBook, the Apple light glows through and you have real hype. I love that. <laughs> but now I'm just thinking of a sans Luigi cut on the Mac when one eye glows. <laughs> okay. We need to make so, that happen, chat. Six. We need 60 subs so we can pay for a sans Luigi. Yes. Sans Luigi has 60 subs. Oh, that would great. be amazing. Same okay, so the th the quick story with this one, yeah, is I'm surprised this one stands out. Like I'm legitimately shocked because so I I will state right now, I'm not the biggest fan of emotes that have the word in them mm -hmm. because I see that so much that I'm like, I if I want to use an emote that says the word in it, I'll just say the word. Yeah, but there are exceptions. But anyway, with hype anyway. I thought, what is more hype than when you see those memes that are like, let's fucking go! And you see the large, like, you always see, like, my mind always goes to, like, um, the deep fry with the lens flares, and you hear, like, that loud pitch noise yeah. in, like, meme videos. That's where my mind was going with the hype emote. It, it like, gives, what's more it, hype It gives that? me the me and, my, me and my boys at 3 a.m. looking for beans vibes. Beans, yes! And it's just all bass boosted I, and everything. I will say I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't deep fry it, but it would have been unrecognizable if I yeah. did. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll have to do like like a, a like a t-shirt collection, like maybe for like Halloween <laughs> or something. Maybe for the month of October, because um, the only thing that sucks is that whenever you get rid of an emote, you have to wait for them to be re-approved over and over. So I would I wouldn't change them out too much on Twitch. But I am more than happy to get a deep fried version of it and have like a Halloween uh, shirt and hoodie drop of deep fried Luigi. Yo. And when, I mean by, fried when, Luigi. when I mean by deep fried, I mean deep fried. <laughs> like you're looking at the 3 a.m. looking for beans and when beans comes, it's legitimately saturation, 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 saturation. It's... It's so deep fried that you go to the state fair and they're like, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> no more Oreos for you, son. <laughs> so before we get into this next emote, I want to show my original emote for this. And I want Ooh. you to give me your actual opinion because I had someone say something very specific to me. So I'm going to enlarge it. That way you can kind of see it well. All right. Okay. So this is the original emote that I made. <clears throat> now you guys know in in Twitch chat the emotes are a lot smaller than what they are obviously in you know that in this picture right now where it's you know pre massively sized. Oh no. By a lot of people in my chat they have called this the dick emote <laughs> because it yep. looks like a dick. And I'm on here like it legitimately says GG at the bottom. And they're like, yeah, but if you look at it very, if you squint, it's a penis. <laughs> so I didn't even have to squint. That was the that was yeah, the first the thing first initial that like, this is a penis. So I I guess I hate to retire the penis, 
you know, maybe what I should do is like, maybe I should do O's instead of GG's. <laughs> and and just and just uh, maybe call it and maybe just, see if I can maybe do like call, a smiley face or something. Call it Luigi O, like Luigi O, <laughs> so it can get reapproved. So they're not like, what is this? Why does it just say O? <laughs> or have... um, to be to be really um, really around the corner, call it Luigi Head. <laughs> this guy has a dick emo. No, it's not. It's the head of Luigi, you fuck. <laughs> you, get your mind out of the gutter. Get I your just mind Nintendo, out of the guys. gutter. Gosh, I'm a pixel artist. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, so speaking of GGs, the next one up on the docket is our GG emote. And I will say, this is kind of the one that I was like, in the, in the way, like, you know how something I was looking at other email arts and stuff. This is what I thought I was going to be getting a lot of. Um, but obviously, when I said that the hype one surprised me enough, because you could I can see in like five different ways of doing the hype emote, that I really like how how this looks, mostly because it doesn't look like a dick, and is very cool that you incorporated the coin. A lot of people don't know this because obviously in Twitch and stuff, you guys don't get to see the full picture. But in the full picture that I sent him of graphics drawing, which um, is really cool, uh, my character is actually flipping up a gold coin. So this actually has like a really nice resemblance to both the picture and, if I'm correct, the GG is from my logo that has Repnew made. Yep. So you took all aspects of everything. You took your art style with graphics' uh, attention to detail and the GG from my logo and just, like, incorporate into a masterpiece. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Though I will say, this was the hardest emote to do. Not because of the text. The text was the easy part because yeah, copy that is fun. Uh, I knew what I wanted at first. Um, I will say the original idea for it was I was going to have like a thumb in the corner flipping the coin up and the coin would say GG. But Ooh, I was like, I was like, no, I want the character to be in there. And I realized I couldn't draw in my style your character without it just not showing up at all. So when you look at this emote, this is the Paper Mario style. Absolutely. This that this was what is I was to do. GameCube Thousand Year Door. Like you could see this in like as a power up upgrade or something like that. Like you could see this in there. <laughs> Luigi grows a full beard. <laughs> That's the power up. May maybe for Nintendo's next game, Luigi just grows a beard and just becomes like really overweight, and it's <laughs> just like. Yeah, Luigi had a bad time with COVID. It really <laughs> fucked him up. Him and <laughs> Him and Daisy got a divorce, so he had no more sex, which was his way of burning calories. And he just became a TV trope. And now I have to come and save the damn princess again from a big Koopa that's fucking my girl. <laughs> I lost my castle to the ghosts. <laughs> You're now a lurking boo in my mansion. <laughs> Which, if anyone doesn't know, yeah. we have a new lurk command, and that's legitimately the response you're going to get from it. You are now a lurking boo in my mansion. That is legit really? lurk. Yeah. I'll the only I thing like is I, I, I need to find a way, because I didn't do it on YouTube because I, I wanted to be fair for everybody, but I want to find a way where it will actually say, like, the username, like, blank is now a boo in my castle. But sadly, only Twitch has a two-user command that works properly. So uh, it's like, uh, we're just kind of make them similar for now. And then eventually if YouTube gives like a little more insight on channels and stuff, maybe we could do that later on. Fair enough. Well, that'd so, be cool as heck. Yeah. All right. So next one up is this boy right here. The lovely pog or poggers, you know, whichever oh, one yeah. you want to name it. So I will be honest. The pog idea was kind of a joke idea for me. But then I saw it and I was like, Poggers! And he's like, yeah, it did the job. <laughs> yep. It is a lovely Poggers emo. Not, you know, I don't, think, I don't know there's a whole lot to say with it. It's just you take the Poggers emo that you see on every Twitch channel and you make it my character. Pog. Um, I, yep. So uh, there is a little bit here to say. This is the one I spent the most time on. 
I interesting. Uh, I drew. So here's the thing: because most people who draw characters of Pogging have the mouth disconnected. Yeah. I had to figure out how to get your mustache on there. And so oh. what wound up happening was me drawing so many ironically horrifying, like just broken faces of you pogging and I couldn't figure out how to do it. I had to like, it got to the point where I was sitting here with classical music playing, beginning to get angry. Like I can't get <laughs> this right. And so I'm sitting, you're doing it. And I was like, I'm taking a break. And I came back the next day and I just drew it perfectly the first time. And I was like, we're good. It's done. We're good. We're not touching it. We're good. It's We're done. happy Send. with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. P Pog great. is a very special emo. I think in all the channels. I think because Pog is such a Twitch, like, said, like, everyone who has ever been on Twitch has said Poggers before. Everyone knows what it means. There's, like, there's, you don't have to go into a huge depth story on, 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 on this. It's a Poggers emo with luigi and i don't have the meat canyon broken jaw of the ed and eddie cartoon all right i i too do love my passion fruit orange guava luigi <laughs> <laughs> that next thing i know is just i'm gonna see is a version of the pog emo where it's just like face <laughs> only face <laughs> no eyes no that paw <laughs> delicious <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe my old GG emo and the Poggers emo just collide together slowly, and maybe <laughs> it becomes good head Luigi. <laughs> good head Luigi. <laughs> good you know, Luigi. Good Gu Lu <laughs> Guigi. That's Guigi. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's, we now know how Guigi was made. It wasn't EGAD. It was my GG emo and Poggers emo giving good head for Guigi. Masahiro. Not Masahiro. Oh. Who's the guy that made Mario? I feel bad. Um, Shiro uh, Miyamoto? Miyamoto. He's going to come in and he's like, this is canon. <laughs> this is now canon. It's like... Yes! Where's my paycheck? Me? No, actually, I'll just be like, hey, find me out to Japan. I got you, bro. I have hey, some can weird... Can me in a Mario game? Just, like, if I could... Can I use my voice in a Mario game? I'll, I'll be whatever character you want. Dude, that's a that would be a dream come true. It would legitimately just be, like, fat toad. Like, hey, hello, welcome to my shop. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> you want a power moon? Give me a thousand You failed the mini game. <laughs> Here's how you play the mini game. You fucked up already. Toad just smoking his cigarette in the corner, just like, you here to play my fucking game or what? <laughs> Are you gonna win these lives or what? I'm trying to go get some shit there. I got bitches waiting in the back. <laughs> it's like, and all you see too is just like, hold on. It's just Toadette and Birdo in the background, like slowly. I got faded. bitches waiting in the back for me. I got the Gluck Gluck 9000 from this bitch Birdo, and then I got Toadette on that juicy ass. Line up the pairs and make the proper match, whatever. <laughs> Am I? We got the good power ups. <laughs> Do you want the good head or the bad head? Miyamoto, I'm ready at any time. Just my business line is always open. Just give me a call. I am ready. He just comes up. He's like, "You lost your chance." <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm used to that. I blow a lot of things in my life. It's fine. Anyways, um, anyway. So last but not least, guys, we have. A Luigi version of Keck W. One of, I think, the funniest emotes on Twitch. One of the funniest things ever. The You know, like, whenever you look at this emote, you can just hear the laugh that we just did. Like, solely coming through it. Or the old guy, you know. <laughs> Everybody's just, ah! 
<laughs> you know, and the extra phlegm that comes with the laughing of it. Yeah. So with uh, Keck W, also Keck W is also going to be my one and only animated emote as well, too. At least for now. Um, you know, so what came up with the uh, with Keck W, uh, did you, I, I'm guessing in a way you kind of just like looked up a Keck W emo and kind of just transcribed it. But did you have any like big troubles with Keck W at all for the Luigi at all? Um, the Keck W one was a little difficult because since it's so close up on your face, I didn't want it just be a blob of a color. I had to add detail. So I was like, how do I still add detail with it fitting in the style? That turned out being like adding little things in the nose here to give definition, little shines in the rim of the glasses, which is funny because I realize even now when it's small, you don't see that. <laughs> yeah. But it still somehow translates. So and, and what sucks is that we're seeing it like technically blown up. When you guys see it in Twitch chat, I'll tell you a lot of these details you will not see. Yep. I will say I did test all these. Uh I have a website that I go to where I'm able to test any image that I put in, which is oh, cool. so nice. So I was at least able to know, like, hey, at least the silhouette translates nicely. Not just for this emote, but for all emotes. Hell like, yeah. they all have, like... I'm pretty sure you could uh, do um, that thing that, like, Ludwig did with one of his uh, his mogul money things where they blacked out the emote and be like, what's this one? And you could figure it out. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty confident in that. <laughs> the the OG uh, mogul males. Yep. Shit. So yeah, that's that's all seven new emotes. Um, so I, I guess the, the question has to be said now. I mean, so I think everyone may or may not know this by now, but I am obviously keeping him on as an emote artist. Uh, there's a few ideas we're still bouncing back and forth with even now. Uh, but these seven are the ones that are like completed, ready to go. You know, we're gonna we'll take a small break from it. Obviously, you don't want to just only work on something. Like I trust me, breaks are always right. needed from everybody. Yes. But I think the real question now is that since, you know, you're on here, you have somebody probably watching, um, <laughs> you know, but you have like emotes out on, you know, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and, you know, also all of these emotes will also be available in my Discord as well, too, as emotes for anyone to use for reactions or just emotes for anything you want. Um, now that these are kind of out there and you kind of finish these, um, is there like a weird like sense of relief that you have on it or is it giving you like sometimes whenever I finish a project, I itch for more because it's like I want to do more of this. I'm going to say I'm itching for more. Like I've said before, emotes were the thing that drove me to Twitch because I wanted to make emotes. And now that I finally got to do that and I get to see how people are going to react and use them. That's incredibly exciting. I'm sure that at some point during one of your streams, I'm going to come on and watch, and someone's going to use this emote completely off-key in a way that neither of us expect. Oh, yeah. That, and I'm going to no, have so time. much joy. Yeah. I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to be like, I'm going to feel like a dev, like in Mario Maker when they use bullet bills the wrong way, and I'm going to be yeah. like, <laughs> creativity! Creativity. I am, and I am so excited because now... If I hit affiliate on my channel, I get to make my emotes. Yeah, you get to and make I, your I'm own. I'm excited for those. So I guess the the you know a, a fun thing that we can try to do is, um, do you have any like like a website that you have or anything where people can see any or all of your work or like a portfolio or something? Ooh, I've been. So here's my issue, right? I've been meaning to have multiple. I want to have one where I have all my work, but because I have the bougie art one and I had I had a doodle one, um, I can point you towards my bougie art one. I don't have a doodle one except for if you go to my Kofi, you can see all my pixel art and stuff that I do. Um, with your permission, I probably will be adding these emotes on there to say, hey, I worked on these for this yeah, so absolutely. you can see those. Um, the Kofi is the one where I usually put all of my doodles and just fun art. Um, 
I plan on adding, you can go to my Newgrounds as well to see all my fun doodle art that I may not even have saved on my computer anymore. A, a, a lot of these Gen Z people don't know what Newgrounds is. I'm just letting you know right now, they're, they're going to be so confused. <laughs> they're going to be so confused. <laughs> go, go, to the, go to the Friday Night Funkin' website. I there have you art go. there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I got to reach these kids. Yeah. <laughs> So something but, that, um, that we'll have to try to make a goal for is get you some form of website, even if it's a free website, you know, something that people can can draw you towards. Um, because, I mean, if he's doing emos for me, and I'm a very interesting streamer, um, I feel like he'll do emos for a lot of other people as well, too. So Yep. Um, I also post my stuff on Twitter. So you can follow me on Twitter, and if you want to commission me and stuff, Twitter is the best way to go for that. That's the best way to get in contact with me uh, because I am very bad at checking emails. I'm the same, honestly. I, I, I have to go. I just have to go to different sites to see what people say. I got like eight different emails for so many different things. And I sit here and I'm like, I check one maybe a day. <laughs> emotes are uh, not emotes. Emails are the only thing that I feel like I should probably check more, but I don't. But also, if it's an email that intrigues me, I click on it pretty much immediately. But yep. if it's one that's just like, oh, here's your stats, I'm like, eh, no, whatever, it's fine. Just yep. <laughs> I already knew the stream blue is fine. I don't have to worry about it. You know. <laughs> yep, I the, completely the, feel that. The, the nicer things in life. <laughs> the grass outside. The grass outside. What's grass? <laughs> What's grass? Well, have you ever had cotton candy before? Uh, what, what's cotton candy? Uh, t t <laughs> try okay, so you know how you have hair on your face, right? Yeah. It's kind of like that, but on the ground, and it's like a greenish color. Oh, wow. Like Luigi. <laughs> yeah, it's Luigi hair. <laughs> It's Gooigi hair. <laughs> oh no! Where I just start grabbing just a green pen, just start just eventually just going like, oh yeah, green, yeah. You just take a can of scary paint. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, you want to be able to move your face? No. <laughs> that 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 hair is gonna stick for a while, so you better have it perfectly centered down this way, so it creates a proper. V line because if not you're you're SOL. Yep. You're gonna have liberty spikes but on your chin. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> next you're gonna next you're gonna tell me I'm gonna have a mohawk and you know, that's all that shit. Reveal. <laughs> Reveal. I'm actually bald. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's old, yep. guys. He's balding. <laughs> yep. This is I what actually shaved my head for. I actually recently shaved my head because I was painting my face on stream, so that's why I'm bald. <laughs> I think that's your receding hairline, but you know what? I'll be nice and not point that out. Channel. We, don't <laughs> do that on channel. we don't roast people here on this channel. That's something that we have never done. I promise you guys on that. Yeah. Yeah, face like a painting is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, guys, it's a receding hairline. I'm a little <laughs> self-conscious of it, <laughs> so just bear with me. Just, just live with the lie for a little bit. Let me live yeah. a little longer, knowing I'm not going bald. I'll start wearing wigs on stream to hide it. I'll be like, hey, I grew my hair out in a day. <laughs> I, I bought this one simple, easy life hack to get all of my hair back quickly. <laughs> There's some clickbait for you guys. Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Lovely. If you take some dish soap and put it in a spray bottle and put it all over your face, <laughs> it gives you... <laughs> face! If you, put, if you put honey on your scalp, and then dip your head into a beehive, the bees will slowly sting you and give you new hair. I'm full of cursed ideas this morning, they, this evening. They they hate your face, but they love your honey. Be careful where you put it at, or you'll get an upset tummy. What is that from? Is that, did you just come with yes, that on the fly? I, I, I did. 
and oh, the jo- wow. and the joke of that is if anyone's ever been kicked in the nuts before, it doesn't actually really hurt like down there. It hurts your stomach more than anything else. So it was a penis joke. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it was mostly a penis joke, but you know, I'll elaborate if you want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but for any guys out there who are watching the channel, and if you ever been kicked in the balls or have something just thrown at your balls. And it hurts. It normally goes up to the mid area of your stomach and just hurts like that for a fucking long time. Yeah. Ugh. High school. I'm getting pain just thinking about it. <laughs> Shit, that was my probably half my middle school life. I got fucking. You just get used to getting bullied, so I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I remember when I was in a. <laughs> Quick story, because I think we're <laughs> reaching the end here. I have no idea. Uh, I have, a. Uh, when I was in, uh, elementary, we had, uh, this, like, football day, and this is the worst day of my life, because we had a quarterback come at school, to, like, be like, hey, kids, come do football, you know, like, we had, like, someone from the Bears show up and be like, yeah, we're gonna do this, the quarterback kicked a football, and it rebounded off a pole and hit me in the... And I'm, like... I, this is, for me, this is, like, fourth grade. I'm a fourth grader who just got my innards destroyed by the Bears quarterback. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a great, uh, a, a great way to be like, you know what? I met a great quarterback... My nuts hurt, but yep. I made a great quarterback. Yep. It was that football right there. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you loved it so much. <laughs> I had to come up to him and get it signed. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, sir, you uh, you accidentally hit me in my balls. Can you sign this base? Can you not sign this football for me? Oh, no, it's, I'd be on the ground just like, He's just like, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, yes. There you go, little one. Don't sue me. Now stop being a pussy. And get... <laughs> He's like, oh. Join the bears. Join the bears. You can get hit like that. You can get hit anywhere. He's <laughs> getting just smashed in. Like, this is what real football is, kids. Brian Urlacher just beating you to death with a football. <laughs> concussion, concussion, concussion. Now you okay. know. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> I got better. Giggles now, man. Oh, yeah. That's great. That was great. So I see you have a lot of like Pokemon stuff. Are you are you a big Pokemon guy or? Yes, you are. Okay. Like um, that. I I love Pokemon. Uh, my girlfriend loves it way more than me. Uh, so I just like Pokemon. Um, like uh, I'm trying to explain this. I've only played the new games. I never played like the old Pixel ones. Okay, so you're My so, you, so you know so you're mostly around like Gen seven, Gen eight, kind of like did you Gen did, four? I think is the earliest. Okay, so you're talking about like Diamond Pearl with Piplup in them, pretty much. Yep. Yep. Okay. But ironically, my favorite Pokemon. If that's the next question you're gonna ask, it usually is. Best Pokemon. Okay. Chimchow. Okay. I'm not mad about that actually. Chimchow has a really nice just I don't know, Chimchow has a nice overall look and for being 100% honest, it is a Pokemon version of a Chow. So <laughs> If you love Sonic, you'll love Chimchow. <laughs> yep. It so, also has good type advantage. <laughs> yeah. So since you do like Pokemon, um, I had some very generous people in the cop cards community. They got me some Pokemon cards. Um, and if you want, I am willing to grab one and break it on stream right here, right now, live. And we'll see if we can get a hit. 
Hell yeah. All right. So the only thing is I will have to make sure I have a clip of this so other people um, – because sadly a lot of them are like YouTube subscribers. They don't really watch the Twitch stuff. Um, yep. But we'll see. So uh, so the bonuses that I got was someone uh, gave me a celebrations pack, which was really nice of them. And then two, and then someone uh, gave me two uh, fusion pri- fusion strike packs, and then uh, someone bought a, an an entire copped pack for me, and they broke that live on stream. And you know we got a few hits in here. We'll go through these real quickly if you guys want to. Now these Ooh. aren't like these aren't like mega hits in my opinion. These are kind of like soft hits. Uh, but I only have one uh, hard hitter, which is this uh, V Max right here. Yo, so it's not bad. It has some re- it, like this is a very playable card. Like if you play the TCG, I think this is a very playable card in my opinion. Yep. But uh, all the hollows that we got, we have uh, Gloria. Oh, I sh- really should probably have, have to actually probably plan this out a little bit better. I'll go through <laughs> as quickly as possible. I guess Sally, the uh, autofocus, it's great, but it does take a minute. I will say yeah. Inf- Infernape is one of my newer favorite Pokemons. Nice. Yep. Loved it on 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 the TV show, and I love it here. Rock and roll, hell yeah. Ooh. Eight palm. I feel like an audience member, just like ooh, <laughs> like ooh. we're just gonna say ooh to add every card, like ooh. Ah. And then with uh, let's see, some and, Pokemon and- Go. Yep. We got some Moltres. Oh heck yeah! Just just edit in the little like Mario coin. Like this is the price of the card name. Oh no, I mean I could do that uh, if I cut this out for its own video. Fair. We got Bussy. I mean Blissy. Nice. Ooh. So while you're doing this, are you excited for the uh, Scar- uh, Scarlet and Violet? I am very excited for it. I actually, like, I'm probably a very weird person. I actually, I do own, like, Sword and Shield, but I only played a little bit of Sword and Shield. And I don't want to say it got boring after a while, but it's just, like, it didn't have, like, the charm that the yep. DS games had and stuff. It felt very, I guess, corporate in a way. It felt very corporate. So That's I'm fair. very excited for this new one because this is a completely new idea that they're coming out with. And, you know, I'm excited to see how it's all going to turn out because I feel like Pokemon battles themselves are going to be very, very different now. Oh, yeah. So I am I am equally excited. I, I have a, Which one are you going to get? Probably. So in my opinion, Scarlet... While it's, um, I think while it has a few like good redeeming things, Violet, in my personal opinion, has a better legendary. I agree, full agreement. I'm really mad at the Scarlet legendary. <laughs> so, and the Scarlet legendary is not bad by any means. It is a it is a very good legendary right. Pokemon, yes. but the Violet one is ten times better. Sorry, just being honest here. It's it's a rocket bike. Why would you? Yeah. Why would you not want a rocket bike? Let's be honest. It, it's a it's a Pokemon that's the legit Tron bike. Of yeah. course, like for most people, that's what it is. Oh, you know what it probably is. It's probably people who like Scarlet or people who grew up with Jurassic Park, and then people who get Violet are the sci-fi movie people. Maybe that's very interesting. Interesting. All right. So I think what we'll do. Uh, that way we make it fair for the people who did actually buy these for me. Is I'll go ahead and open up the Celebrations one. Now, this is only a four-card one, so. And these just came in. So I was gone all weekend, guys. So I do apologize for only having uh, already edited stuff ready for you guys. I didn't have any streams this weekend. I went to go work at my grandparents' summer home on some stuff, and I didn't want to... Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to stream because the internet is not very consistent there for being very honest. All Understandable. Right, so you know what? If there's if there's a random Pokemon TCG hunter out there, get yourself some free Pokemans. Click. There you go. <laughs> All right. 
Here we go. So, first one up. Actually, you know what I should do this way. I'm going to try to do it this way. That way we can do like this. All right? So, here's number one, everybody. Ooh, I like that one. That's Ooh. nice. <gasps> Ooh! Yo. Dark Gyarados? Sheesh. Heck yeah. <laughs> okay, we do have a hit. If you can tell by the very bottom, this is a full art. So, what full art do we get? Ooh. Dude. That's not a bad hit. That's, That's a not cool bad, art. not bad. So, we now have to do the Oppa Mary, how much is this card worth? Pokemon card value. Uh, there we go. Prices and trends. Search. All right, we're searching for Samantha V. I'm going to say a wild guess. I think the Dark Gyarados is going to be the higher priced one. It probably will be. Oh, careful. <laughs> okay, so that's a jumbo car, sword and shield. Where's the 20th, 25th anniversary? All right. So it is an ultra rare card. And this guy is a solid 55 cents. Uh, <laughs> you had me so excited. I'm very good at that. I'm, I'm very good at building hype for letdown. <laughs> like a lot of like, AAA game companies. <laughs> Sonic Orders. Anyways, um, I'll give you a little sleeve. Why not? Why not? It looks like a Dark Gyarados, though. I think this will actually be, like, the uh, the one that I think I'll actually make my money on. I actually used to have one of the originals of that card. Oh, shit. Yeah. I miss it dearly. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so this is a Celebrations Classic Collection. So because of that, and with it having, obviously, the big 25th anniversary sticker on it, because you know it's a, it's a re-release, yeah. um, you are correct. It is a better value. 56 cents. Actually, you know what? You're, you're wrong. Oh. 60 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's hey. 60 cents you didn't have before. That's very, very true. All right. I will say that because like, technically Dark Gyarados, some people say this will be a hit. Some people will say this is not a hit. In my opinion, I love Gyarados, and having a Dark Gyarados yep. is really cool. So this is a hit to me. But some people might say it's not really a hit. But we did. it's not bad for, for four cards. I mean, the nice thing is that they're all hollow, which is very nice to yes. have. Uh, you know, that really helps out in all that. I have a few other cards over here that I had. Now I technically have a whole, I have a whole other package of Pokemon cards I could open if I really wanted to. But I have thought about kind of just like leaving it and just be like, maybe in five years the value of this thing will just skyrocket, <laughs> and I can just make a few hundred bucks back. I don't know. Absolutely understand and feel that. But also, too, like if I'm being very honest, too, I could just also just go out and buy more more Pokemon cards. So the the question is, if you do open the pack and you cut it into shorts for YouTube, will the monetization make up for buying the pack? Probably not. If we're being very honest here. Ah, uh, fair. Know. Ooh, okay. So I do have an, another full art, um, which is this one. I pulled this in a 25th anniversary ETB. And I will say this guy actually has a, a an, an actual decent value. So ETBs are around, what, 60 bucks or whatever? 
So this could pay Ooh. for an eighth of my ET ETB, five dollars sixty-five cents. <laughs> nice. Um, the only other one I'm gonna look up is I do have a Mew EX. Let's just see how much it is. And it is a. I have to make sure I look for the one that has the 25th anniversary stamp on it because if I don't, it's technically you're gonna get incorrect. excited. Yeah. Don't worry. I got excited for two seconds because because I, I saw a Mew EX that didn't have the 25th, 25th anniversary stamp on it for $107. Aww. Uh, this this Mew EX, while it's pretty and I love Mew, it's only four dollars thirty five cents. So. You know, if I sold each and every card individually, I could probably make my money back from the ETB. But I will say, I got these cards for free, and I also got these two Fusion Strike packs for free. So I really can't be mad. So, but here, I'm, I'm yeah. going to show you something. Hold on. I'll, I'll BRB. Entertain the chat. Uh, okay. Give me one second, guys. I know exactly what to grab. I am apparently missing the thing I was going to grab. I was going to just pull out a harmonica, but I cannot find it now. So instead... Hmm. Wait, hang on, I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. Oh no, my pins! Okay, so I do have this uh, collection pack, uh, and it is a Pikachu Shining Fates collection pack. So I that's way better than what I have. So, so I don't know. <laughs> if, I, I might look up and see the value of it, because so the uh, one... Shining Fates are the ones with the shiny cards in it, right? I believe so. Expansive. <laughs> I can get my mouse. There it is. Okay, cool. So Guitar, if you fall on me, we're going to have issues. <laughs> Ooh. Yep. While you're looking at that, do you mind if I run away for a sec? Uh, I can tell you the price already now. Oh? I'm very fast at typing, but if you need to go do something, go for it. Uh, I just gotta use the bathroom, so oh, I'll wait for a yeah, second. Go, go, yep. go, 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 go. Well, I tell I'll the chat it. about this amazing sponsor. I'm sorry, I don't have a sponsor. Let's be honest here, I don't get shit. Um, but yeah, but if there's any companies out there, or if the Pokemon company wants to sponsor me uh, to break open Pokemon packs, um, hit me up. I have a great group. I feel like I could do it with, and we could bring a really good deal to everyone all together. Uh, yeah, you should, like, really do that. Like, it'll be super fucking cool. So, uh, yeah, Pokemon Company, give me your money. Now. Okay, anyways. So, um, I'll go ahead and tell you guys in chat, even though I have a weird feeling he's listening to this in his bathroom while he's, while he's either pooping or peeing. Um, so originally this was around 40 bucks for this. Now, the one thing is I did get this at a discounted price because one of the flaps, which is, I think, this flap, this flap one of the flaps is messed up to where when it sits in a weird position it just randomly just opens back up uh so it had a bad clay it had a bad gluing on it so the one thing i will say is that i could try to wait and see if it's going to hike up a little bit uh because this is from 2021 um and so technically i paid i think 25 bucks for it and right now the value is looking at a solid nineteen twenty three, so it's not bad, but it's not good. So I don't know, I don't know about you, but I don't know. 
fucking Pikachu. Because realistically, I could open this one and just buy, like... Because I could just buy, like, two more and just be like, oh, Shining Fates! You know. I have returned. Welcome back. Did you in enjoy your, your poop and or pee? Uh, yes, the toilet enjoyed it very much. <laughs> very good. You filled it up. Very good. Proud of you. Um, so were you listening to the stream while you were in the bathroom, or did you uh, listen to something different? Uh, I was listening. So the you got it for 25 The price yeah. is – the value right now is it's 40 something The original retail price was $40. I got uh, it for around twenty five because of the damaging on it. I was able to get a discount from it, um, and right now it's retailing for nineteen twenty three. Interesting. So, in my brain, I could be like, I could just break this open right now, and then just buy another one that's properly sealed, because this one does have a mess up seal. So that could mean it's defective. Maybe, and I do know, I do know people do like defective stuff. But also, too, since none of the cards are defective, I feel like that's different. Um, also, we did a poll. Did anyone even vote in my damn poll? <laughs> I just noticed that. Manage poll. View results. Zero. Cool. Well, you guys are getting the green hat. Green! Congrats. You win! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow. Wow. So, I don't know. I, I So, I'm willing to open these up if you guys want me to. Or I can maybe, like, do, like, a whole Pokemon unboxing stream as well, too. I can do either or. I don't really care. These aren't going to hurt my feelings because, honestly, I can legitimately go on TCG Player and just buy, you know... I can just buy another Shining Fates box, or I can just go to Target or Walmart and, and get, like, other things, too. I think open it and buy another one. That's yeah. my that's my choice. <laughs> 19, 1985, I don't care. It's unopened, and also I can get four of them. So if I really want to, I can get two of them, and I'll basically be getting my value technically right at the same mark, you know. Yep. So. What you'll do is in five years make another video of opening one of those packs. Yeah. And then in 10 years from now, when I probably don't know where the hell it is anymore, I'm like, oh, shit, that was over there, wasn't it? <laughs> I Wrong found house. this in my <laughs> attic. <laughs> Ooh, open up Pokemon. Uh, so there's one guy in uh, the Cop Cars community. Obviously, Sophia's in there. But there's one guy. His, his name is Young Big Mac. And he, like, pops in sometimes, and I feel like if he pops in right now, he's going to be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what <laughs> extremely shitty setup are you doing right now? Because in that general, like, if I gave myself 15, 20 minutes, I have another 4K capture card and a camera on a mount that I could put on my desk setting down. Like, I could do that in 20 minutes, but I don't really think y'all went wait for that, so... Maybe for the next Pokemon stream, maybe I'll have you know, a whole setup for you guys. And I'll, and I'll be like, cop cards, your move. Not really. They already have the setup and everything. I'm just cheating. Let's be honest here. It's, it's, it's the yoink and twist method, everybody. It's the yoink and twist method. The hell is that going on? All right. So, first up. Also, you stupid do... question. Go for it. Do you want me to, like, just sit here and watch yeah. you do this yeah absolutely. all right cool i'm all right with that if, if you got nothing if you got nowhere to be so you do get this pikachu v uh promo card which is awesome uh you can tell that it's a promo card so if you look at the very very bottom there's a little black star that says promo on it so and if i'm right some promo cards are actually like kind of sought after so I'll put it in a, in a little sleeve. Why not? What's the worst that's going to happen? I use a sleeve. Oh, no. I'll go spend another $2.50 on my local game store. And obviously, you have Big Bertha, the promo. So Yes. Uh, so, f uh, funny enough, my old HR 
and one of my other coworkers would actually sometimes buy ETBs when they when they come in, and we would sit in his office like during lunch, and we would just open ETBs and see what hits we got and stuff. And we would always put these big cards. He had some like floating shelves, and we would just stack up these big cards and stuff like that. So, Anthony, I know you're not watching because that's because you plan to be at work in five hours. So, yeah. Did did you see the the video of the dude doing the tournament with the big cards? Yes, I thought that was awesome. Right. <laughs> okay, so also guys, just let you guys know, you guys know I don't do any tomfoolery and stuff. There was a random code card just sitting at the bottom of one of these. So yes. get yourself some free Pokemon cards. <laughs> Here we go. So we have 10 in here. You guys know the the way that you do it is you do, uh, at least, what, four from the back, put them forward, and then that way the last two that you get is your um, your hollow slash shiny and your extra hit. So. All right. We have some good Pokemon cards for you guys. So here's some Pokemon cards. If no one claims these, I will put these in the Cop Cards Discord. All right. So here we go, guys. <clears throat> Normally, I'm looking at the screen like this so I can, like, do this. But I forgot that I don't have a camera right here, so I can't, like, look down and do this. So I have to show it to you guys like this. So here we go. I'm going to I'm close and personal with you guys. So do you know what this is? a green energy. <laughs> All right, so, yes, Nick Merck's time. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Grass Energy. I can't read the names on these because I'll be very honest, I, I can't see them that well. Uh, Flacky, Gym oh, Trainer. Yeah. yeah, Gym Trainer. Ooh, Rusted Sword. Rusted Sword, okay, okay. Uh, the attacks of the Zidigon V, this card is attached to 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Ooh. Very playable. Next up, Toodle. Toodle, and then we have more Peko. More Peko. Oh, more Pek. If y'all don't like more Peko, we we will have fights. This is the cutest goddamn Pokemon. We this is the cutest goddamn Pokemon. You can't tell me. You can't look at this and be like, this is a cute Pokemon. That this is like on the top tier with Piplup and and Chimeco and everyone like that. Everyone who has cute ass Pokemon. This is on the list. Anyways, <laughs> just letting you guys know. All right, then we have, trying to make sure I, I center it for you guys. Then we got Kinkia, all right. Horsey, like it. q -fent. So this is going to be... What did I get? Ooh, okay. It's not a huge hit, Wait. but it's still a, a not terrible hit. Dude. Isn't that Rush Around the Amazing Rare? Um, it does have the gold foil on it. Is this considered the rainbow one, maybe? The the rainbow swirl thing, that's its own rarity. Oh, I did not know that. I knew I knew that it was rare because it has the gold. Because you guys know that the, the gold uh, outing and stuff has its own rarity in Pokemon. Um, I yep. don't know. This is the one thing I, I don't know a lot about Shining Fates. I know like Sword and Shield stuff very well. I don't know about Shining Fates stuff right now. So, uh, so let me. I got, I already have the website pulled up. I got you. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Let me do that. It's gonna take a second to load because it's a website. Uh, do 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 do. do. Uh, of course, they want to show me shit like normal. GX, GX. 
Oh yeah, grid is much better. Oh, that's so much nicer to look at. Let's put me on his list where I have to look at it one by one by one. Okay, here's the card. And it sells for... Dollar nine. Not bad. Yeah. It's actually, I actually really like those. They're really cool with their effects, though. Oh, yeah. So if I would have opened this in like earlier 2021, I could have gotten around, you know, 14 bucks for it. Not bad. But yeah, it's not not bad. It's also very nice. Um, yes, it's called the Amazing Blaze. Uh, and this Pokemon also does 60 damage to itself. Jesus. And it is an Amazing Rare. So there you guys go. Amazing Rare. It's a very pretty card. Anything with the gold look of it, in my opinion, is super pretty. Like, why would you not want gold foil anything? Gold foil is absolutely the best thing in the world. Let's be honest here. I can't even hit the hole, Jesus. And, oh my gosh. Oh gosh. No, 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 no. It's not doing that. It's not doing that. There we go. Much better. All right. And Luxray, let's see what you got, my friend. Do you have a hello? If this shit loads, I will not fight it right now. Oh, wow. I just noticed what time it was. <laughs> uh, one, yeah, it's one twelve in the morning. Well, we don't have to go to work too early tomorrow. Uh, that's fair. I think I'm going to stick with one more pack and I'm probably going to head out. Oh. Because I work at six in the morning. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, I work from home. So well, that's I don't have to drive anywhere. That means you can wake up at 5.55 yeah. and just run in your office. Right. Uh, for those who don't know, part of my artist thing, uh, I'm a full-time graphic designer as my job. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll let you pick which pack we do. And then what I'll do is I'll leave the other two packs for later. All right. All right. They're all the same. So they all have the the Charizard on it. Um, so which one do you want? The first one in your right, in your left hand. This one? Yes. All right. I need, I need, a, I need a big something. I, I need a big something. I pray that there is a big something in there. That's what she says when you meet her at the bar. All right, anyways. Get yourself some free Pokemon cards. Yeet. I'm going to hold my chin chow here yeet. in excitement. Ah, jeez. Lol. All right. So, here we go. We have a energy like normal. Uh, I'll go fast for this one as much as I can. All right. Floatzel. Okay. Okay, I like this. This is a cool Pokemon. Yep. I like that one a lot. Okay. Oh, please focus. There you go. Okay. Ooh, that's a cool art. Yeah. Shinx. Shinx. There you guys go. Ah, oh, that's cute. All right. And we got that. Another horsey. So why not? All right, I think we're getting to our okay. rare, so. Yo! All right, let's see. Ooh, okay. Wait. Okay, we have a bird keeper. That's, that's a decent card. So you have... So that's a shiny Toodle. It is. Let's see how much Toodle is. I'm always happy to see the shinies. Those are my favorite cards in that entire pack. They're just amazing. Oh, yes. And they are Shining Fates. Shiny Toodle. Okay, actually not bad at all. 
uh, two dollars thirty for it. Yes, that's not a <laughs> bad pack at all. And then let's see what Birdkeeper does. This is a full art too, so that's a nice help as well. Ooh, okay, Birdkeeper full art's three ninety one. Hey, the pack paid for itself. Not bad, not bad. If you bought no. this at a convenience store for like four ninety nine, you pretty much got your money back except for tax. Nice. So, wow. Pokemon cards, we love it. Yep, gotta catch them all. You have to. <laughs> you absolutely you have absolutely to. You absolutely have to. If you don't, the Pokemon company comes to your house and they absolutely <laughs> seize all of your property until you catch every single Pokemon. <laughs> Their Pokemon loan sharks are going to come in. It's going to be Professor Oak at the door with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, give me your TV until you catch all of them. <laughs> Here's a Game Boy. Get Gen 1. Let's go. <laughs> he hands you a cell phone. Is Get all shinies in Pokemon Go. <laughs> now. <laughs> and then just hangs up like, good luck. That's, that's all you guys. You just get a, a simple good luck. No like, oh, cool. This is cool. It's no good luck. <laughs> Click. You, you do it, and then the loan shark comes back, and he's like, just like the games. And he hands you just a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you did okay. You're a Pokemon master. You're not getting your TV back. <laughs> why would you why would you want to be a Pokemon master? Now that you're a big Pokemon man, it's now time for you to learn something. Yeah. Alright. Let's look well, this up. I don't think Pikachu V is like a super oh jeez, I just so fucking many of these I forgot. That's fair. Part of the whole thing. Is this it? Yeah. Um. 92 cents. That's not bad. Still not bad? I mean, it's, it's, it's Pikachu, guys. You guys know this by now. It's it's Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu is legitimately on every piece of merchandise you'd ever think of from Pokemon Company. But, um, all right. So, we'll probably go ahead and just end it there for the night, guys. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to go ahead and just like chop up the, um, like the interview portion of the stream and I might throw it up on the YouTube channel for you guys to have for whenever you want to. And then obviously this VOD guys will be live on my VOD channel, uh, within the next day or so, whenever Twitch decides to properly export it. Um, yeah. Do you have any last words you want to say to the chat before we end it off? Um, Thanks for stopping by and listening to words that I have to say. Uh, is it okay if I to ask them to go check out my stuff? I guess. Uh, this one yay. time. Yay. Yay. Uh, check out... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Check out, check out somewhat Cloudy on Twitch. And uh, also on Twitter. I do art and stream. And sometimes occasionally have hot or cold takes on video games. <laughs> I have a very cold take on Valorant, but we won't talk about that here. Well, that's a, it's, a, it's not a very good game. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that's what it is, guys. Sorry. If, if, <laughs> if you watch my last stream, I streamed Valorant. And I just completely, I got so mad right at the end that I just decimated into the game. <laughs> And I looked back and I was like, wow, I sound like a jackass. It's okay. I mean, it just, sometimes yeah. it just happens that way. True. Anyway. So, yeah, guys, we'll give him a follow and let's try to get him up to the affiliate marking, guys. It's, it won't take us too long if one extra mini Luigi just goes in and hangs out for him for, uh, for a little while for each stream. He should get that average three viewer mark but for everyone who has been on here who has hung out on tonight's stream i appreciate you guys all for being here uh we will have another stream tomorrow here on the twitch channel we'll do some more uh react andy content we might start out with some kirby or mario maker or something and then we'll move into react andy 
Uh, and then remember, guys, on Wednesday, we have our YouTube live stream, which um, we'll figure out what we're doing. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do on Wednesday uh, because me and the Iron Bros Challenge is dying on the inside. So we'll we'll kind of figure it out. We'll say it that way. <laughs> but nice. I appreciate you guys all for being here and hanging out with us tonight. I am going to try to find somebody to raid real quickly. If you give me a little second to look. Do be da ba ba da ba. What the fuck is Task Force? Absolutely not. not yeah. Oh, yeah. there's this cool guy on my Twitch right now. Uh, he says he's live right now. Uh, you should raid the Luigi Master 1000. Oh, cool. That's neat. <laughs> we like that guy. Yeah, he looks cool. All right, well, how about this, guys? How about we go and raid Brave? Brave just, uh, she's been a mod on my channel for the longest time, the ass they ever think of, and she just hit affiliate guy. So if you have any spare spending money, uh, go give her a little subscribe. It really means a lot. Or go drop some biddies her way. Uh, make her day and stuff like that, chat, because she just got it. Like yesterday, she got the email, so... Go give her some love, guys. Uh, go give her some subs. Make sure that she knows that she needs emotes. And maybe send her to somewhat cloudy as way for emotes. You know, promotion all at once, I guess. So, that's all I have for you guys. I appreciate you guys all for being here. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Luigi, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Okay, and then...